And welcome everybody to the Gym Masters Show Live. How are you and you and you? Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you had a fantastic weekend, whatever that might have included and encompassed. Hopefully, maybe it was just getting some rest or maybe doing some things around the house you needed to do. Maybe you read a good book, watched a good movie. Maybe you binged, watched, and caught up on our episodes of the Gym Masters Show Live series all available for you on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. Whatever you did, we hope it was a great weekend for you. We had a very busy weekend. It was really, really terrific. Uh, some time with family. We also had a lot of things to catch up on as well. And it was really, really nice. We had a beautiful weekend here along the coast and we made full advantage, took full advantage of that and made good use of that as well. We also uh, worked on the preparation of all these shows that we have coming up this week, a very busy roster of incredible guests and great entertainment and levity, love, and of course, light and levity as you guys like. Uh, hopefully you missed us. <laughs> it seems like you did because we got a lot of private messages from everybody and we got a lot of Facebook messages and uh, and texts and YouTube comments and all kinds of cool stuff and we love that. So sharing some levity with you on a Monday evening, our last uh, Monday before uh, November. So we hope you're doing well, whatever you're doing and uh, wherever you are around the world, uh, irrespective of whatever time of day it is. Cause I know for some of you, it's like early in the morning in Australia and New Zealand and other parts of the world. It's late at night. We really appreciate you guys being with us late at night. For those of you here in the Eastern time zone where we generate this show from, which is out of the greater New York area in the Northeastern United States, uh, between New York and Boston, uh, it is 7 p.m. Eastern here. And hello to everybody on the West Coast where it is 4 p.m. kicking off your early evening on the West Coast. Of course, we do this in style. We welcome everybody to the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series Getting into week 25, which is amazing. Weeks and weeks and weeks of episodes. Great guests, great commentary, great entertainment, great inspiration, and knowledge building as well. And it's been extraordinary. Been also very busy with my professional work, hosting a lot of episodes of the radio shows and uh, television projects and other stuff as well. And things uh, really busy with that during the daytime leading up to this show. But uh, I hope you're doing well and we toast all of you. And what is in here? It looks very expensive and very fancy and like it would probably knock somebody on their rear end if they sip any of this, right? You know what it is? It's just Trader Joe's pink lemonade. That's it. <laughs> just Trader Joe's organic pink lemonade. It is a Monday night and it's refreshing too. Mmm, so delicious. It hits the spot. Busy day today on the air too. A lot of shows uh, hosting, and then we're out on the coast as well, uh, walking and cycling. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Say a quick hello to everybody, as we love to do. All of the loveities, of course. Everybody here is a lovety on our show. Christine Clifton says, "Greetings, Jim and loveties. We welcome saxophonist composer Danny Lerman to the show." tonight. Looking forward to this incredible music and conversation in Lovety Hall. Absolutely. Everybody knows this as Lovety Hall. Lovety is a world word I just happened to stumble on when I was once saying love and levity. <laughs> I think that goes back to the early summer and everybody fell in love with that word. Good to see you in North Carolina. Christine watching on our YouTube channel. I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love that. And so many of you have. We really appreciate that. We're building that up. And that is our home base for everything. We also put on some extra uh, content this weekend, unrelated to the Gym Master Show Live. Just some snippets from some other professional work I've done over the years as well. I mean, I've got years of stuff. We just put on a few clips uh, with me in different roles, acting, hosting, television news, uh, commercials, all kinds of stuff. That's also on the YouTube channel as well. Good to see you, Ralph, in Indiana. Hope you're doing well. And Kathy Short is here. Happy Monday, Jim and lovely family from Cleveland. We love Cleveland. Good to see you, Mary. And uh, Kathy, and now Mary Bishop. Nice to see you there. Hope you're doing well. Hi, Jim and Lovities. Merlin is here. Hi, Jim. Welcome back. And all Lovities, you as well. And I love that picture. Uh, 
That's not an updated profile picture, I know. <laughs> that is a cool pumpkin. Hope you're doing well there in Canada, our wonderful neighbors to the north. Bernadette says, hello, Jim and Lovities. Hope your weekend was great. It was terrific. Hope yours was as well. Avril Britton, who's watching in United Kingdom. Love to have you there in Hampshire in England. Avril, good to see you. Hi, Jim. Hope you're doing well. And all of the... <laughs> Instead of liberties, uh, love, loverties or loveities, she wrote liberties. <laughs> I guess when you think of America, liberty is something that is true to form here, isn't it? Maybe that was a Freudian slip. Hello to all the liberties and the loverties here on uh, the Gym Master Show with love from Avril in England. Uh, Jennifer Barry is here dancing. Good to have you with us here in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Very busy day in Allentown, huh, today? Juanita in South Africa. Hello, Jim and everyone. Hope you had a great weekend. You as well. Good to see you, Juanita. And Wozniak. Hello, Jim and everyone. Hope you all had a marvelous Monday. We sure are. Hope you are too. Claudia is in the house. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Good to see you as well, Claudia. Marsha Watson. Hi, loveties. Good to see you as well, Marsha. And uh, thanks for all the great comments over the weekend, too. Everybody saying hello, checking in, writing private messages, sending me notes. I love that. I love that. And glad to know that you guys uh, missed us. We missed you, too, as well, as always. Karen in Pittsburgh. Hi, Jim. And everyone, hope you had a wonderful weekend. Glad I can tune in for tonight's live episode. We are glad as well. And I know if you can't, you always like to uh, catch up on our Gym Masters TV channel on YouTube. Good to see you, Karen. Kathleen in New York City. Hi, Jim. Hope you uh, had a good weekend. Missed you. Hi, all. We missed you too, Kathleen. Good to see you there. Francis is here. Hello, everyone. Yes, Jim, a little bit of everything you mentioned. Absolutely. Good to see you, Francis. Hi, Jim, and all the loveries. Hope all are well today. Whoop, whoop. Our clocks are going forward. So now it is earlier in the UK for you. Ah, that's right. That's right. Sharon DeMaria, wishing everyone a wonderful evening. You as well in Connecticut. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Bernadette. We missed you too. And uh, glad you're here tonight. Christopher Joseph from Ohio. Hello, Jim and Lovities. You too. You were missed. Thank you very much. We had our weekend off. I think one of the first full weekends we had since we started our show some 25 weeks, 150 plus episodes ago. Marilyn in uh, Wichita. Hi, Jim and all our Lovities. Good to see you, Marilyn. Hello, everyone from Ann and SoCal, Southern California. Good to see you, Ann. Very rainy in Missouri. Uh, weather report update from Claudia. And cheers from Merlin and Mary. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Jim and everyone. Happy Monday. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. Look forward to the show with amazing music, inspiration, conversation, and levity. And look for the message I sent you. I sent you a private message, Crystal, uh, on Facebook. Check that out. Something cool. And Slancha from Bernadette as well. And, and, and we have more. Wait, there's more. We'll get through a few more and then we'll welcome a very special guest. A few more. There's a lot more. Avril Ching Ching Jim and Pink Lemonade is delicious. It sure is. Ramiro Tejada is here live and direct from Argentina. He was a terrific guest on our show. Remember when Ramiro was here? He's watching on the YouTube channel. Good to see you, my friend. We had a brilliant show with him. He was a guest. He sang and so much more. Hope you're doing well there in Argentina. And uh, I have been a walking advertisement for Trader Joe's lately, haven't I? I need to work out some sort of arrangement with them. <laughs> uh, you're going to make some pink lemonade. Welcome, Danny Lerman. Absolutely. He's uh, in his studio right now. Good evening, all. Everybody's saying hello to everybody. Linda Odell, good to see you. Glad to see you are doing well, Linda. Good evening, Mr. Loveding. Good evening, Loveties. Welcome back, Linda. I know it's been tough for you lately, and I hope you're doing well. Francis, uh, Lovety, just so you know, folks, it's not a Scrabble word. Of course, it's not a Scrabble word because it's not even spelled in the way that um, grammatically people would approve of. That's why we're sticking with Lovety with the E in it because it's just our word. <laughs> Tess LaBella, wonderful uh, comedian and actress and voiceover artist was here couple of weeks ago. And here she is again watching. She's an avid fan of our show. She loves it. She's telling everybody about it. We appreciate that, Tess. Hello, loveties. Jim, you look amazing. Wow. Thank you very much. Saw it in the window and grabbed it. <laughs> Thank you, Tess. Uh, hello, Jim from Mary Lynn. Good to see you and welcome. Nice to see everybody here. Welcome to your amazing guest, Danny. You got it. Everybody's here. We're going to go through a few more. 
Happy Monday from Afro Lerman. Good to see you as well. Welcome to our show. How are you doing? The weekend was terrific. Allison, I hope yours was as well. Uh, Sherry Schoenlein is here. Hi, Jim, and all the lovelies. Good to see you as well. Nice to see everybody and all the love that's coming our way. Uh, Willie is here as well. Nice to see you, Willie. We are there. And hello from Columbus, Georgia, from Donna Sanders. Welcome. We'd love to have you there from Georgia. Welcoming Danny to Lovety Hall as well. Good stuff. You missed us, Willie. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And we missed you as well. And now we're going to bring on a very special guest. All your friends are here too. Jeannie and George and Gilligan and uh, Jimmy and, uh, of course, Silver and Lynn Lynn. They are all here as always. And they say hello and we'll show them probably a little bit later. But first, I want to uh, welcome my very special guest, Danny Lerman, to the show. Let me tell you a little bit about him, too. We're going to have some great music and conversation. He's a riveting saxophonist and composer. Danny has studied with Junior Walker's legendary teacher, Charlie Atkins, and at the Music School of the University of North Texas and the Berkeley School of Music, as well as so much more. Um, this is incredible when you have an opportunity to chat with somebody who really loves what they do. Uh, he's earned stunning reviews, opening the door at international uh, display festivals and concerts in Finland, Venezuela, South Africa, Indonesia, the Netherlands, Turkey, Hong Kong, Mexico, Israel, and of course, the United States. Danny has recorded and performed with Howard Hewitt, Danny Boy, Bobby Lyle. Bobby Lyle, I have a lot of his CDs, Norman Connors, and so many others. Danny has performed with people, Bryson, of course, another legend, Kevin Mahogany, and Ander uh, Falcon, as well as recorded with Randy Brecker and Dave Valentin and Hubert Laws. Danny has opened for Herbie Hancock and Michael Brecker, Sergio Mendez, Richard Elliott, David Benoit, Eric Marenthal. I think I have all of these guys' CDs. <laughs> Ghetto Boys and Joe Lovano, among others. He's performed as a featured soloist with the South Bend Symphony and in Breda Holland with members of the Metropole Orchestra. And I remember, I don't know if Dick Backer still uh, conducted, but Dick Backer used to be the uh, head conductor for the Metropole Orchestra. Uh, Danny's compositions have been featured in movie soundtracks, Wedding Bell Blues and Kill Me Later, as well as commercials for J.D. Powers, too. Uh, really cool stuff. He's got original music and his new EP, Ice Cat and Blue Jazz, as well as his sax work on uh, Dutch uh he, Dutch artist La Prince's new album. That's cool. I have to check that out too. And uh, and so much more. You can check all that out. First, I want to welcome him to the show live and direct from his uh, studio. We're excited to have him here. Give us a warm welcome for a brand new lovety here on the show. Danny Lerman. Danny, welcome to the show. It's good to have you with us. Yeah. Welcome. In the house. In the house, literally. <laughs> so how are you today? Hey, living the dream. What can I say? That's <laughs> well, it's great to have you here. And thanks for, you know, making time for the show and everything. And everybody is, uh, they're all here welcoming you. I'm looking at all these comments that are coming in. Merlin in Canada welcomes you to, to Lovety Hall as well. And uh, they're all saying that you're a Lovety now too, which is what happens when you come on this show, you become... I love it. Linda in Florida already says, good evening, Danny. You're now a lovety. You're one of the loveties here on our show. Welcome, Danny, from Bernadette. Um, hi, Jim. Great program. We're waiting for Danny Lerman. Looking forward. Fantastic. Good to have you here. Uh, Mary Bishop says, welcome, Danny. And Crystal says, uh, she's in Connecticut. Hi, Danny. Welcome to Lovety Hall. And uh, Juanita in South Africa says, welcome to the show, Danny, which is awesome. You know, while all this love is pouring in, and I'm seeing it here, and I love this, this is typical for our show. This is the kind of community and positive vibe we've created with this show all these weeks ago. Welcome, Danny, to Lovely Hall. So happy that you're here. Sherry watching on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. Encourage everybody to subscribe to that channel. Marsha Watson, welcome, Danny, as well. Kathleen Walker, New York City, welcome, Danny. Mary Ryan says, hi, Jim, and Danny, welcome. Uh, that's really cool. And let's see, Claudia it says, welcome. And Christopher says, Danny, you look better than those pictures. 
So you look better in person live than the pictures. <laughs> That's a plus, I guess, huh? Welcome, Danny from Maryland and Wichita. And uh, Willie says, let's skip to Willie. Willie says, welcome, Danny from the Netherlands. She lives in uh, Holland. And we mentioned a little bit of a Dutch, oh, yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, the Metropole Orchestra. We're, we talk we're about show that. something from the Netherlands today. Yes. Welcome, Danny. So looking forward to your conversation. Awesome talent from Tesla Bella in Florida. Jennifer is Zen because Dan, Jen is Zen with Dan. <laughs> that is cool. Uh, and Linda is glad to be back. We're glad to have her back. And Christine and uh, Clifton in North Carolina says, welcome to Liberty Hall, Danny. You are now a Liberty. Cheers. Good stuff. Good stuff. What a welcome, huh? <laughs> you know, I almost feel like I'm live in front of every everybody. I feel the levity. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's it's yeah. a better it's a better greeting than you get at the supermarket. <laughs> speaking of love, I would be remiss if I didn't mention I saw my wife's on here. Uh, I think her handle is uh, Ellie Seven Solomon. Yes, I saw that's that. my wife Ellie Sheva Lerman. Is she on the other side of the wall? <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm actually in a commercial building where my studio is. Nice, nice. And I purposely didn't set it up at my house because then the kids would just barge in and start going crazy in here and it would be wild. Renee in Iowa says, hi, everyone, and welcome, Danny. And uh, that's fantastic. And Bernadette now says, welcome, Ellie. <laughs> if you mention anybody, wife, kids, pet, you talk about food, any of it. They, you win them over big time here on our show. <laughs> so well, we'll have to talk about food a little later as well. Yes, yes absolutely. Uh, so you're in your you're in your space there, and that's in uh, South Bend, Indiana, right? Where you were. I mean, you've traveled the world, but you're you're home where your roots are, aren't, aren't you? It's funny how that works out. You know, growing up here, yeah, you see you see some things, and then you want to go out and see the rest of the world and see what that's like. But invariably, I say home is where the heart is. And that brought me back to South Bend, Indiana, uh, sometime after my 40th birthday. And uh, my parents are here. Uh, my brothers and sisters are here. Uh, my hockey teammates are here. Uh, all my buds that I grew up and hung with. And uh, it's just a very nice place to be and of course my fighting irish from notre dame are here as well so mm -hmm. yes. that's right yes and uh you know who was buried there just recently a couple of maybe two months ago was buried actually on the grounds of notre dame regis yes regis feldman he actually wanted to be buried at his alma mater so he's buried at notre dame which is really amazing yeah that was his selection he was very very he would always talk about the school on the, the TV series as well. So uh, so that's cool. So you're back where you, you know, were raised. And tell us about that. Um, being raised in the Midwest there, did you have a lot of musical influences from either friends or family members? What first sort of turned you on to music specifically and then have this love for, for the saxophone? Well, I would say it started out, my dad had this old um, RCA console with a phonograph and uh, you know, not, not so old that it had the cone, you know, a few years after that, but he had these great jazz records, especially some Woody Herman big band records. One of yeah. them was the Raven speaks. That was my favorite. It's kind of more modern big band. And I would listen to that. And then I'd hear all these arrangements going through my head, even though I wasn't really trying to, or be trying to be a musician or anything. And I thought, wow, this stuff, these are incredible songs I'm hearing. What if I actually went to school and I knew how to write this stuff out and maybe learn how to play it? Mm -hmm. wouldn't, wouldn't that be awesome? So I finally started taking, um, and, and school band starts in the fourth grade. And, uh, you know, they play all the instruments for you. And uh, this guy got up. He wasn't really a saxophonist, but kind of played on it. But it just hit me right here. And I thought, that's my baby right there. Plus, mm -hmm. my Uncle Don plays saxophone. And he's a professional and great player. And I always like listening to him and a lot of my uncles played. So then um, I took uh, lessons from Charlie Atkins, mm -hmm. who was also the teacher of Junior Walker. Junior Walker uh, from Junior Walker and the All-Stars of Motown fame was born and raised and lived in South Bend as well. In fact, all his band is still here. He used to tour with South Benders. 
And uh, so I was taking from him and it was mostly jazz improvisation. It wasn't a typical lesson where you're working on your sight reading and your classical technique. Forget that. It was all learn a new tune every day, learn how to improvise over changes. And um, I would say improvisation had a powerful effect on me. And I'll share this story. In fourth grade, we had a jazz class after school. And there was about 10 of us that decided to go. And he said, I'm going to teach you how to improvise today. Of course, we could barely play our instruments, let alone improvise. But we right. thought, sure, why not? We're going to learn this in a day. How hard can it be, right? We don't even know what it is. Uh, but the good thing about being young is, you know, not you don't know enough to be afraid to be intimidated by it. So that's a good thing, right? So he plays something on some chord changes, plays a song. He says, okay, Lerman, improvise. And it was this, uh, as if he told me to speak Greek. Mm. Like, what do you mean improvise? I'm supposed to pick a note? Like, how do you do that? It was such a foreign concept. I had no idea even where to begin. And then he called on everybody else. They were equally clueless. So he said, here's what you're going to do. He played chord change, hit the sustain pedal on the piano, picked up his French horn, which was his main uh, instrument. Delos Sheets from the South Bend Symphony was teaching us. And then he played a little riff, something like, ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -da. and he said, okay, Lerman, play it. And the minute you try to copy somebody, yeah, first of yeah. all, you never copy it exactly, even if you try. And right. second of all, when you're listening to something to copy, you always have an opinion like, well, he played this, but I kind of would have done it this way and that way. And right. that's when you start improvising. That's when you when start you're... to copy and then your inner opinion, and let's face it, everybody has one, decides, you know, I really hear it differently. And that hearing it differently is how you learn how your your own voice when you're speaking a language. And it's the exact same thing with music. Once you start copying, then you can learn how to improvise. And then when you get really comfortable on your instrument and with improvising, you do it without thinking. And it's not just... I find a musical school. One day I want to teach a, cl uh, teach a class um, improvisation for business executives because I've run into people where if plans change, you freak out. You mm -hmm. don't even know what to do. You don't right. even know how to go through the process of improvising and coming up with a new idea or a new plan. Right. If it isn't so improvising in music, makes you comfortable with just following your gut, making it up as you go along and being okay with that, not just with music, but with everything else. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't be prepared and structured as well, but it's a balance like everything. So um, I think I got a little bit on an improvisational tangent there. But, but that's good. So you like, you like the formatics, you like the structure, but you also like the fact that you have the freedom to be improvisational in the way that you want to be as well. So you can blend elements of both into the music, right? Yeah, and, and it's not just that. When you're improvising, you also learn that you have to trust your good instinct. You do. And all you know is if you like something or not. You don't have time to think, hey, would you like it if I play these three notes there? You don't have time for that. You're in the middle of a song. So not only do you have to make it up, but you have to have the confidence in yourself yeah. that this is what I hear and it's good. Yeah, you learn right. not to say, and when, and the minute you don't second guess yourself, then you can start creating like uh, Ernest Hemingway said, write drunk, but edit sober. Right. Right. But right. what it really means is don't second guess your creative instincts, let it flow. Then later, you might want to do some editing. But if you do it at the beginning and stifle your, yourself, you won't get anything out. Mm. So there you go. I'm mm. just letting it flow right now. <laughs> well, that's it. That's it. And I tell you, as you know, somebody who's done television or radio for a long time and, and hosting and a lot of other different things, improvisation and ad lib are a big part of it. And sometimes I, many times on television, especially I've been thrown out there to where they are on stage, whatever, just Jim, just go do something, just go say something, you know, behind the wall, everything's on fire, but just, you got to go out and you just got to put it together. 
And for me, like I'm sure with you as well, those are some of the times that I love the most. Sure, I can do scripts, you can do teleprompter, you can do everything that's written, you can read other people's words and everything. But when it's totally reliant on you and your instincts, uh, and then you pull it off, or you pull it out of the hat and it takes off, it can really be exhilarating. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's um, it's a wonderful feeling. And um, hard to put in words too, because it's you know, just, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll bring in one more quote. Uh, my wife turned me on to a lot of Wayne Dyer recently. Oh, he was terrific. Yeah, and, I interviewed him says, on PBS. You, you have to uh, l let things flow like water. Yeah, yeah. And, and don't be so rigid. Yeah. Let it flow. And that's when the real joy and fun will come out. So, Because uh, hey. most people are rigid the most with themselves, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you a perfectionist at all? You know, being an artist, sometimes it brings I it tend out. to not want to finish it because, oh, yeah, this little note needs to be fixed and this little note. Eh. And sometimes editing. you yeah. have to. It's hard to say, OK, it's finished. Right. Done. It is wonderful just like this. Very it doesn't true. need to be changed. Time to move on to the next thing. That can be a little hard sometimes, you know. So what do you do? How do you know when it's done? Do you bring in other people to review it or does it have to come from yourself to know I'm going to put the period on the end of that sentence? You know, I go with my feeling. When it puts a smile on my face, it looks like, hmm. and that's when I know. And then yeah, you're it's moving me. If it's not moving me, then I know it's not ready. Right, and, and it doesn't exactly. have to be the same emotion for everything. Every song elicits a different emotion and feeling and tells a different story. Right. But it's got to be a compelling story to me. And I got to want to listen to it. And I cannot be, well, this section's boring. It needs to go to the next section. The minute I hear that, it's like, no, something's not right. I need to cut it down, change this part here. A until I go beginning to end and like, wow, that was awesome. The it was like, wow, I didn't even get bored. I didn't even drift off it captured my imagination throughout and then then you know it's ready now not everybody um hears things like you do but like my dad says you're entitled to the wrong opinion <laughs> leave it to <laughs> dad right that's right <laughs> that's and, it and, and of course we is. all think that anybody else's opinion that's not ours is of course wrong but hey it's it's not wrong it's just different it's just a different approach and a different That's take right. and comes from life experiences. And, and how much of your music do you think reflects, uh, if not all of it, the essence of who Danny is? Mm. You know, it's interesting that I think I became an artist when I started writing songs. And, and I went to North Texas. They give you a key to a practice room in a beautiful building. And there's like 200 practice rooms. So invariably, you get in there, you hear this racket. You walk down the hallway and North Texas is known for having hundreds of great saxophonists. So as you're walking down the hallway, you see these guys that sound like they've been practicing for years in that room. And it's like so fast and so perfect and so amazing that you almost feel like, what am I even doing here? Why am I even bothered? How could I top this? this guy's technique is unbelievable. And it, you get some self-doubt when you're starting. But then when I started writing songs, because I met some other guys who were writing songs and I joined them and learned a little bit of theory, knew how to spell out a chord change and brought some musicians into my room to play on my new uh, Tascam reel-to-reel -reel eight track. That dates me, doesn't it? And um, when you're writing a song, you have to start thinking, well, what kind of music do I like? Who am I? What do I want to play? What moves me? You have to answer that question or you can't write anything. And then you follow the melodies, you know. And I'm a more of a melody guy being a sax man. And then I usually write the melody, then the changes. And the feel of it, um, it, it forces you what kind of artist, what kind of beat, what kind of groove. Um, and of course, you know, what kind of records you listen to and like will influence you as well. And that really turned me into an artist because when I recorded my first song, I realized, you know, maybe 
I'll never play like Michael Brecker, but you know what? He doesn't play like Danny Lerman. And this is a damn good song. And all I have to do is be the best Danny Lerman I can be. I don't have to be Brecker. And the minute you kind of realize that and know it, it starts clicking and you become an artist. And when you're original and doing your own unique things, that's when you become most interesting to other people, I think, as well. So It's very true, very true. Yeah. Some of the viewers or loveries uh, ask a couple of quick questions here, too. We like to bring them into the fold when we can. Merlin in Canada says, who is your favorite saxophonist? Do you have a favorite? Is that tough? To well, you know, maybe Michael Brecker. Um, some of his stuff definitely goes over my head. Um, but I love David Sanborn and... Um, Oh gosh, um, who plays Wine Light? Grover Washington. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of contemporary players that, that are wonderful. Um, let's see, who's the guy that did that tour with uh, Phil Collins, uh, the sax player? Um, oh, I know who you're talking about. I'm yeah. trying to remember him, wonderful player. There's a lot of great guys out there. And What about Kenny G? You know what? I always like Kenny G, especially his live album. And I used to wear my hair in a mullet, just like his old pictures, too. And I used to get a lot of gigs because they wanted Kenny G, but I was cheaper. So they hired me. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Kenny. I got a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, but one thing I would never do is I would I always played my own original music. You know, when they wanted some Kenny G for some private function or a wedding, sure, I would do it. But in my live shows, I did Danny L. Right, and in fact, right. I used to play this place called the Back Room in uh, near North downtown Chicago. And this woman came up to me and said, um, hey, would you play some, are you going to play some Kenny G? And I said, <laughs> I'll tell you what, go ask Kenny G if he'll play some Danny Lerman. Danny Lerman right. If he says yes, then I'll play some Kenny G. And she looked at me like, huh? Right. <laughs> like, Why do I want to play Kenny G? I'm me. I've written all these great tunes that I want to share with the world. He's Kenny G and you're Danny Me. <laughs> That's right. Give me a chance. Give me a chance. Now, I play some cover tunes once in a while, but when I do them, I do them in a more of a unique way. Right. You know, a different groove. You might not even recognize the tune at first, you know, and, and to me, I make it an original. Right. That's how I like to do it. I see no reason to do something just like someone else. You know, some people do that, like it, love doing covers and try to do it exactly like them. And hey, God bless you. If that's your thing, do it. But for those of you that just feel like you got to create new things, then you better do that. You know, you mm. got to be true to yourself and your calling. And um, like you said earlier, we're all blessed to be able to do things that we love to do. Exactly. And one of yeah. those things, in addition to being a phenomenal sax player, is you're a composer. Uh, tell us about that when you first uh, really got into the study of composition and when you started really composing your own material, Danny. Um, you know, I first tried to compose my own material when I was at North Texas, had freshman theory class. Um, in my right hand with one finger, I played the melody. And in my left hand, I played the bass note. Yeah. And then... I figured, okay, now I know this is a C, so it's called a C something. And if it's a major third, then it's a C major. If it's a minor third, it's a C minor. And then, you know, the fifth is the same. And the seventh could be a flat seventh or a regular seventh. That tells you if it's a major seventh, a minor seventh. And I follow my ear. I'm playing right. the melody in the right hand. And I try some different chords in the left. I don't even know what I'm playing, but I'm trying different permutations and to see what sounds good, and you just follow your ear. Some guys write great songs, never studying theory, because it doesn't matter if you know theory or not, you have to use your ear to make music. Right. Now, knowing what the chords are helps you write it out so you can have musicians come, and it's easier for them to play the song and all that. But mainly, you just follow your ear, and your ear follows your heart, end of story. Uh, and then, yeah. you know, you got some, and I'll tell you, it's a joy. You know, um, I like to write not on my saxophone because that limits you. When you play the sax, you kind of want to play the things that are easier to play on the sax or the sax kind of 
pushes you to play, you know? You play different things on a sax than you would a harmonica or a piano because the instrument kind of lends itself. So I like to to kind of write it in my head because in my head I can play anything. Right. So I kind of hear it. I may fiddle around with something on the piano, but when I do that, I'll hear something inspired by that in my head. And then I follow the head and that's always the most musical. What was that that I was hearing? Mm. Yeah, this is it. What, what kind of bass note and chord would go with that? So sometimes it comes quick. Sometimes it, it, it's a little faster. Um, but then you have the song and, and everybody can write differently. Um, Elton John starts with the lyrics and then puts the music after, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't usually do it that way, although I, I usually write melody and then lyrics. And I also do some singing or writing for other people. And then the real joy is when you get great musicians and, a, and maybe a producer, a ranger to take your song from rough demo to a masterpiece. And it's like your own baby was just created. And then even more joy is being able to play that in front of people at a wonderful show. And it's sounding magical to you. You're playing for yourself and the musicians on stage, but also for them and they're loving it. That creates that magical moment, and it's your baby, your song, That's and your that song. makes it even more special. It's uh, what other people are right exactly, and uh, and then sometimes even putting their spin on it a little bit differently, and that, that all happens exactly. You mentioned uh, playing in front of people and sharing a wonderful experience. We do have, and, and you're going to play a few things uh, while you're there in the studio live for us as well. I know people have been asking about that. Is it going to play? Absolutely. But, um, and of course, it's not the same as what you hear on the CD or on stage, but he's still going to play along, which is really cool. Um, this here at Jakarta, tell us about this incredible festival that you were a part of and what we're going to check out here right now, Danny, so they can get a good sample of some of the incredible material. Well, first of all, I want to say a thanks to Jeanette Merckx, who booked me there in Indonesia. Um, she's a, a Dutch Indonesian that has worked with me for years. And um, I met her in Turkey, of all places. And then Henry Lamiri, who's a fantastic Indonesian violinist player, also worked with her to get me in. This is sort of a Indonesian Arabic style, um, almost Muslim religious music, a little bit kind of thing on a beach in Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, and I think TV2, which is one of their national stations, came down and filmed this. A wonderful job. There was fireworks. It, it was crazy. And we did this um, Indonesian folk song that has an, an Indonesian folk music many times has an almost Arabic tint to it. Um, and there you go. All right. This is literally hot off the presses. You just sent this to us uh, minutes ago. So this is uh, being seen probably for the first time for many here, which is really cool. And uh, let's enjoy that right now. And then we'll be back, chat more. Lots more coming up on the Gym Masters Show Live. Good to have everybody here tonight. Thanks for joining us.
Holy cow, holy cow. <laughs> oh my God, that was incredible. You must be exhausted just even watching it. It was amazing. Really, you know, really. It's funny, watching back at that, I was realizing he was trying to tell me, I'm trying to end the tune by bringing in the melody and I didn't quite realize it <laughs> at the time. That is funny. And uh, I guess this was the very first time this has been seen on any sort of American television show ever. Yeah. This very, is very cool. Thanks for sharing with us here on the Jim Master Show Live. We appreciate that uh, honor for it to be debuted here. That's incredible. And the comments, I don't know if you've been seeing them because you were probably fixated on performance as we all were, but I've been I was watching you, I was watching the performance and these comments coming in. Juanita in South Africa says, fantastic. Kathy Short says, that was remarkable. Claps and hearts from Crystal in Connecticut. Mary Bishop in Florida, lots of claps, loving it. And uh, Francis says, well, thanks for sharing it with us. Bernadette, Bernadette says, uh, bravo. And that is really incredible. And uh, I know Jennifer Barry, she's been dancing in her living room and she danced mm. in her kitchen. She's been dancing all around the house. Mm. And she, Jennifer is in uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Kathleen in New York City says, good stuff. Crystal in Connecticut says, beautiful music. Tess LaBella in uh, Florida, watching on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV says, Absolutely overwhelmed with such joy. What a talented man. Bravo, Danny. She's loving it. And um, dancing in the hallway now. <laughs> She's dancing all over the house too. You can have the vacuum cleaner. You can do it all at the same time. Uh, what a blessing in listening from Marilyn in Wichita, Kansas. And um, Bernadette says, such a joy on all the faces. All of you playing. You can see the joy and the passion in all your faces as you were doing that, uh, Christine Clifton in North Carolina, enjoy listening to all the different musicians jamming together. It shows how much they love it. And, uh, and you obviously do. And, um, let's see, Mary Bishop says outstanding, uh, Jennifer Barry in Allentown, Pennsylvania up wiggling. <laughs> you can do whatever you want when there's good music. Merlin in Florida. Wow. What a great arrangement. And, uh, which is really, really nice to see. And, um, let's see more coming in here. Christopher says, love the stage with the electric violin, the other instruments as well. And, uh, let's see, let's see here. Great saxophonist, of course. Jennifer was dancing also in the living room. Danilo in San Diego says, bravo, amazing. Allison says, he's really good. <laughs> Kathleen does all kinds of claps and little saxophone emojis. Enjoying the music from Bernadette. Willie and Holland, all thumbs up with all those saxophones. Marilyn says, wow. Karen in Pittsburgh says, bravo. And on and on and on. Uh, how does it make you feel when you get responses like that where the music touches people? Jennifer says, thank you, Dan, so much. I was dancing and playing me tambourine, slancha. That was remarkable. Fantastic. Claps from Francis. And, of course, from me and us, us here at the show. When you hear that, it must really you know, touch you because uh, you're not doing the music for the claps, but... Uh, when it does inspire people and gets them to really feel good and forget about their troubles and the chaos of the day, which music can do because it's very healing too, it must make you feel pretty good, huh? Yeah, I mean, being on a stage like that um, uplifts you 
as well. And then when you see the people out there enjoying it and cheering and the fireworks going off, um, it's just a blast. It's an overwhelming experience. You can't even describe it. You just kind of feel it almost, you know, you get goosebumps just being there and you're playing it, but you're also kind of a listener too. It's kind of like you're almost going out of your body and watching it as well as being inside the music and the best seat in the house is where I was, I'm standing on stage right in the middle of all that. So, um, gosh, I like a good concert as much as anybody. And I get to be in the middle of the concert. How great is that? Yeah. Great fun. Now, some people, you know, musicians, singers, what have you, some people, um, prefer the studio and feel more comfortable doing their studio and then they're good. And some people really love the stage and they love the, you know, the energy of the audience and the camaraderie and the friendships that are built and just the whole vibe of being on stage and, and those feelings that were created just like with the, you know, the improvisation and everything going on there. Uh, do you have a preference? Do you like both? Or are you somebody who prefers being out there amongst the people doing your thing? You know what? It's funny because when I'm just out doing a lot of shows in like the busy summer season um after a few months it's like well this was great but i've got some new song ideas yeah. i would love to do some new music i want to get in the studio and record and now that all the shows are canceled all over the world yeah in the united states indonesia everywhere so it's you know it's a good time to be in the studio recording and i'm working on a new ep just put out a new single uh, and but it's like, you know, this is great. I'm doing these new songs, but I really miss getting out there and playing for the people. So really the balance it's for me, it's it's doing both and keeping them balanced. Yeah. Yeah. So you're working on some cool stuff now. Tell us how you how have you been keeping creative and, and busy, especially during this, you know, very strange year that we've all been living through. Have you been staying connected and busy and, and creative and allowing positivity to flow through continually, Danny? Well, you know, staying home with the wife and the kids and the family, and that's always wonderful. And um, and I'm, I'm Jewish and I enjoy the Sabbath, go over to my parents' house for a nice Sabbath meal. And uh, that's always uplifting as well. Um, I'm playing ice hockey, and thank goodness the holy ice rinks are open in South Bend, Indiana, and I can <laughs> still play. Um, but, you know, there's plenty still to do and focus on, um, and you just got to, you know, find those things and force and, and think about the things that you can do that maybe you don't get a chance to do as much. And, um, and it's all good. Uh, as far as, you know, writing... Um, I was going to go out to L.A. and work uh, with my producers. Um, I'll, I'll just say um, Adam Hawley produced my new single, Blueberry Pie, which is like number 46 in the smooth jazz charts now. Congratulations. And that's, you know, I'm very excited. And when you get a chance, you know, go on YouTube and see the Blueberry Pie video. I did it with um, my kids. Uh, and, and I'll just say this, as long as I'm talking, I thought, okay, what am I going to, first of all, when I was working with Adam Hawley, we were at his house in L.A. and his wife would bring us some healthy snacks. So during that song, she brought us blueberries. So that was the working title. He wrote blueberries is the name of the song. So we know what to call it. Right. Um, <laughs> and then I thought, gosh, I like blueberries. So I spoke to Jason Gore off the radio promoter and I said, I think I'm just going to call it blueberries. He said, well, I like blueberries, but how about blueberry pie? And then I had a flashback to my mom's blueberry pie. Mm. I'm making myself hungry. I haven't had dinner yet. Uh -oh, uh oh, folks, food. he mentioned food. Now you're going to have everybody start. I love blueberry pie, and too. We're gonna, I'm going to give you an Indonesian recipe, too, that oh, that cool. video re reminds me of. But I was thinking of blueberry pie, and I thought, I want to do a video. How fun would it be? Because in Indiana, in August, it's blueberry picking season. Yes. So I took my kids picking blueberries. Uh, my wife shot us from my iPhone, set it to 4K. I got an iPhone 11 and the Pro, and it's it did a damn good job. And then, you know, the kids start acting crazy, and, uh, you know, it was perfect. We got them kicking each other. We got them laughing. We got them picking, got them complaining, got them running. Um, and I'm playing in the blueberry bushes a little bit myself. And um, 
And then I, I did a, a shot of my mom making blueberry pie in her kitchen with That's the nice. blueberries we picked. And then there was the scene of eating the blueberry pies outside in the backyard. And um, it's just a fun joy. Oh, now my son wants to say hello. Oh, and, fantastic. Um, Is he there? He's there. Come on, Trill. Come on in. Either the pet comes in, the child comes in. There you it's, go. This audience this loves my that. boy. Say hello. How are you? Brill, what's your name? Brill. Nice <laughs> to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, is he also a performer, entertainer, musician? What is? What are some of your fantastic well, things? You, you like know, saxophone, piano, drums? I'm the, like guitar. Guitar. He, nice. He's, he's learning guitar, and he's dabbling with piano a little bit. And by the way, um, that song, the, the next song you're going to play called Prill and Daddy, he co-wrote with me. <laughs> And wow. I was trying to get I was trying to get him to practice piano and telling him, you know, piano is just not just exercises, but it's fun. You can write songs on the piano. So I showed him some songs that I write on the piano. And then I caught him one day playing the piano. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm, I'm writing a tune. Let me hear it. Uh, come back in an hour and I'll be finished. OK, great. <laughs> so, he, you know, he, he started playing this melody. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. kind of a, a young youthful almost child song <laughs> melody but yeah. i thought i hear something so after he played da, 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 i heard ba, 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 ba and it goes back to his line da, 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 and then i heard it just started coming to me in fact i haven't even recorded the song yet um are you leaving now no what you want me to get you something out of the vending machine what what look what's happening he's got he, he's getting a lot of hellos. Merlin in Canada says, hi, kiddo, saying hello to him. Sherry says, amazing. Juanita in South Africa says, hello. They're all greeting him as well. Marcia says, hello, young man. She's here as well. And Jennifer says, hey, buddy. And uh, Marcia says, love your curls. So who? I guess both, maybe both of you. <laughs> my, my wife is... Um, a father and son duo. My wife is from Ethiopia, but then grew up in Israel. So he has kind of these curls from my wife yeah. a little more than me. I don't like the curls. They're, 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 they're <laughs> awesome. They are awesome. Renee in Iowa says hello. Tesla Bella goes ah with lots of hearts. Christopher Joseph <laughs> in Ohio says father and son duo. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Huh. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Wow. And you're going to hear the song that we did. You know, inspiration comes from all sorts of places. And um, that's the fun. Every song has an inspiration. So anyway, yeah, that's how I got to Blueberry Pie. That's how I wrote the other song, Priel and Daddy. And I've been playing in Holland for years. Uh, Janet Marks, who brought me to Indonesia, also brought me to Holland. It's funny. Your wife says hello from the and, house. Um, she says hello, your wife. Hi, hi, Ellie. His mother. <laughs> and um, hi, mommy. Gosh, it's it's. Uh, Mary says, "Hey, kiddo!" From Mary Bishop, saying hello. <laughs> it's so all I, in the family. He's now a lovety too. He's been all right, Pearl. Well, you yeah. are now a, a lovety. Lovety so, on the Jim Master Show live. Cool. So I would say, Jim, if I would describe my music, I would say this. If I was a restaurant, I would be international fusion. Uh, and that and that's what my music is because I always wanted to see the world. He's like, I want to be taller so you can see my whole face. <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay, you're heavy. You're big. He's he's a hockey player. That was guy. the workout um, day. Yeah. So so <laughs> when I was in Indonesia. Bernadette says, hey, young man. Marsha says, is he shy or no? I'm not, <laughs> sure. not Apparently not. not. Shy. He no. just walked in in the middle of my, uh, uh, you aren't shy. Your, your television conversation on the show here. Yeah. Huh? 
Wow. So who wants to hear an Indonesian recipe? Yes. I think this audience does. They already said, they already I, said, is he talking about blueberry pie? Let's talk food. I, I, there is blueberry pie, but since we were just showing Indonesia, I was in this restaurant, somebody was eating, uh, drinking a green shake. And, and I was like, what in the world is that? So they make these chocolate shakes with avocado. They put the avocado in there. Yeah. They put ice, they put some That's sugar. Awesome. They put some chocolate syrup, a little water in the blender. They may be a little bit of spice in there and you blend it up. I'm telling you, you wouldn't believe it. It kind of tastes like chocolate ice cream. It is awesome. And you guys can all try that one at home. It is really yummy and it's good for you too. That sounds, and, and, and says that he has such beautiful eyes. See, they, they, they're on them now, yeah. Thank you. Ralph says hello as well. Oh, hi, Ralph. Yeah. And a thank you to Ralph who introduced me to you, Jim. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Do you also have, you have your instrument there, right? You want to show us and describe the instrument? Tell us yeah. about it. Yeah. Well, this one, this is my soprano sax. This one is um, born in Paris, France. It's a Selmer. Um, it was assembled at the Selmer factory in um, Elkhart, Indiana, which is only 25 miles from South Bend. So I was lucky enough to go there. They let me try 20 of these. Well, they're still hot off where they, you know, cook the lacquer in the furnace. These horns are warm. And when I picked this baby up, I think this was maybe 12 or 13 when I tried it. It just sang to me. And Selmers are interesting because... Um, there's a lot of handmade uh, in the production process, and they all sound different. So here, yeah, I'll blow a little bit. Watch out, Phil. We want to hit you. Oh. Careful! That is, Don't that trip That's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, so this is a song that I actually played to my wife on our wedding as she walked down the aisle to me. And I wrote this with a um, a Dutch Indonesian Pascal Nanlohi. It's called "If Only." Ah, I'll very just nice. Play a, a little bit of it. Yeah, yeah. And then she oh said, God. I do. <laughs> <laughs> How can you not after that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was funny because, you know, in a Jewish wedding under the chuppah, uh, we're all kind of standing there. My parents are there and and um, my wife's walking down the aisle to me. And then I sell to tell my, and there was a little band and we worked it out. And um don't touch that, Pril. It's uh, uh, no. I was gonna say it's, yeah. falling, down. Yeah. it's falling. It's falling down because you're trying to knock it down. Thank no, goodness I'm my four-year-old's not here. Don't so, hit the off button so yet. I said to my buddy, <laughs> "Now," and my dad said, "Now, now what?" And he hands me my soprano, <laughs> and I start playing to her. And the band starts with the song. We didn't even have a chance to rehearse it, and they were just they were reading it, and they did it great. And I played, you know, the first verse and chorus for her as she walked down the aisle and uh, kind of a surprise for everybody there in the crowd. And in the back at um, this the Citadel Hotel, you can see the old city of Jerusalem with the Western Wall 
in the background. This was outside mm. on a mezzanine. And you saw the Western Wall behind us and, and the, the Dome of the Rock Mosque. You could see that too. Uh, what a gorgeous, I'm gonna go. gorgeous view. Mm, okay. mm, see you mm. later, Frio. Now, his, <laughs> in a few years, when you have your own album out, you can be on the show, okay? <laughs> in the meantime, go practice. <laughs> I don't know how you're gonna be on now, you said that song that he's a part of. Tell us about that. Um, yeah, so that song started because I heard him playing a, a snippet of a song, and um, I also, uh, with Ralph, we have the, the uh, we started the South Bend Jazz Festival in South Bend, Indiana, and it's been going about seven or eight years. Uh, we're on a little hiatus now until things are opening up. And I brought in a Dutch musician who um, then brought me to Holland to tour with him. In, um, and this was uh, like a theater in the round in Arnhem, Holland, um, where they filmed that movie, A Bridge Too Far, actually. Uh, it was a big battle in World War II. And um, a gorgeous old theater. It looked 100 years old. And we set up kind of in the middle where the audience would normally be. And the audience was seated in a circle all around us. The band was great, all, all great Dutch musicians. And um, I played with him. And I also did some uh, original music. Um, uh, and this song is called... Priel and Daddy. What was it like also performing with the Metropole Symphony Orchestra? That must have been a, quite an honor too, huh? That, that was great. When I first came to Holland, I was playing with Dutch Indonesians from the Maluku Islands. And um, they're Christian islands and they're Christians. They fought against, um, they fought with maybe with the French against uh the japanese and um and then they they fought with holland when holland um had the country and holland got booted by the japanese so the dutch brought them there as kind of a reward to holland and there's a lot of great musicians from maluku and and i was playing um it was like a world music festival with the orchestra in breda it was so much fun Mm -hmm. um, so we were playing um, these Dutch Indonesian kind of songs with all these percussion instruments and the band on the right side and then all the symphony players on the left side and like and all these percussion like worlds colliding. And mm -hmm. that's what I love. That's international fusion at its that's best. Right, worlds right. colliding, new fun that you didn't even imagine these conversations. Exactly. It, it's like having a V8 of crazy fruits and vegetables all in one place getting along, having a great time. It's how fun is that? Right, right, exactly. That's very, very cool. How long were you involved with that? Uh, that was just one show, but I toured all over Holland from north to south and um, doing a lot of my own shows, sometimes in theaters, sometimes in clubs um, and playing with some other musicians as well. And so I've gotten really to see that country and enjoy it and uh, love it. And I kind of miss it. And um, uh, one more food item that I'll say that's up on my my Facebook, Dutch herring. Oh, I've had it. I've had it raw when I was doing We I was yes. there twice for TV shows, travel TV show I host and lifestyle travel show. And we were there once and there was one guy there that just had it. He's like world famous. And they, they feed it to you literally sliced it and right like that <laughs> and of course the producers wanted to get that sh the host doing it and get that shot perfect but it is delicious i mean he just they just take care of it right there in front of you and yeah. it's great and it cures jet lag i found I, you know now they have it at the airport there in ski bowl man does it really yes wow so wow. you get some of that and uh, maybe it's the vitamin d or who knows what could be. Wow, it's good. And the Dutch cheese is incredible, too, I will say. Oh, that, yeah, I've had that, right? The cheese, the beer, uh, oh. the chocolate. Now, the, the recipe you said earlier, somebody said that the your your, uh, your audio went out or something a little bit. Can oh. you say that recipe again? Yeah, so um, the Indonesians make this shake, and you cut up avocados uh, in cubes. You add ice water, sugar, and chocolate syrup. You put it in a blender 
And it is a wonderful tasting chocolate shake with no dairy and it's healthy and it is unbelievably yummy. You, mm -hmm. you got to try this. In fact, man, maybe I'll go home and see if I have any avocados. And, mm. Yeah. I am getting hungry here now. Man. And I was talking about that. <laughs> talking about Renee goes, I'm making uh, my mom-in-law's Dutch noodle soup with meatballs right now for supper. See, this food gets them to run into their kitchens and start cooking. <laughs> well, you see, once you start eating, then, you know, you, you look online and you play my new video, Blueberry Pie, with the, with the food, good music. It's, it's all one. It all goes together. Absolutely. And Bastian <laughs> Steven, of course, Bastian Steven, who was a guest on our show is absolutely amazing too. He was uh, on your show? Yeah, he was on our show maybe a month ago. He's terrific. Well, I, he, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mention him. He's the one who um, brought me to Holland and yeah. um, I was playing in his show, Bastian Steven, and, and they loved him uh, here in America as well. Very talented. I, yeah, yeah, very talented. In fact, I played on his last album as well. Yeah. Um, it's in the archives at Jim Masters TV on YouTube, the whole interview with him live and direct from, and he played too live for us from uh, Holland direct. It was great. No kidding. I didn't right? even yeah. know he, I didn't even know he was on the show. That's, yeah. that's incredible. So yeah, yeah he's yeah. been an inspiration because he produces these great videos for himself. And I thought, well, I've been doing videos, you know, more non-music videos for years. And I thought I got to have a hand in this. So, the blueberry pie video was my first and he was giving me some pointers, you know, how to promote it and get it out there. And, and, um, this one, I, I thought it would be about family, you know, people are home cooking and everything. Um, my next one might be a little more of a traditional music, uh, video kind of thing, but they're all going to be different. And, um, and you this know? one is Pearl and Daddy. This is the one you s mentioned, uh, playing. Yeah. Uh, live at Luxor. The Luxor Theater in Arnhem, Netherlands. And this was, I believe, in February, just before the world shut down. Just before one of the so one of the last things that you were able to do yeah. overseas was this that uh, you want us to show. Okay, so we have it queued up and uh and again, give us a little preface again. Uh the two of you uh Yeah, I, I I wrote this with my son Priel and um and this song, it starts kind of a youthful, childish type of melody. And then from there, I heard the rest of the places it goes. And then it goes into a little Latin groove. And and there's some interplay with me and the guitarist as well um, in this song. And, uh, you know, you'll see we're in the middle of a theater surrounded by the crowd. It kind of looks like a um, MTV unplugged set. It's very cool. Wow, wow, wow. That's truly amazing. So we'll check that out now. Everybody enjoy, and then we'll be back. And Danny will play something else for us live as well. So here we go. Enjoy, everybody. Thank you. 
Really nice, really nice. <laughs> well, you know, wow. I remember right after that, you know, it took us a couple hours to calm down, have a beer or two in the in the in the back room. And then it was an old town. I mean, like really like hundred years old. So a couple blocks away was this old town square and there was some clubs and one of them was a rock club, but they had people sitting in. So, and, and as a matter of fact, I think uh, Bastian said this was the place where he got his first gig. So he introduced me and, and, and the musicians. We all went up there. We started jamming with the band uh, and having one heck of a fun time in, in this in this rock club turned into a jam session um, after the gig. And that was like after midnight. That probably went till two in the morning. Um, real good time. And, and that's part of the joy of playing these shows, and especially you know, internationally, you always get to go out and do cool things after the show, usually, um, and and see new things, meet new people, and that's half the fun right there. Is there ever is there a venue that uh, is on your would love to play at list, sort of your bucket list, uh, a location mm -hmm. where you're like, boy, it would be fabulous to be there. Yes. Uh, and actually a friend of mine, uh, I think is booking it now. So maybe I got a shot. Um, the Red oh, Sea Jazz Festival. for you. Oh. Well, no, he's booking it for the festival. It's the Red ah. Sea Jazz Festival in a lot Israel. And that's, you know, that's always been a dream of mine to play there. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll get a shot now, uh, mm. and, and play there soon. Um, I, I got to play a few years ago with the Java Jazz festival in jakarta um with this uh indonesian pop star and we had five thousand people uh, come into this venue that held even a little less than that it was standing room only it was incredible and uh so that's where i started getting known in indonesia in fact i think i have more people that hear me on youtube there than mm -hmm. than than uh, even in the states and um but there's there's Amazing a lot of that, that happens show. sometimes you can really develop as Jerry Lewis knew with France, you can develop incredible uh, love and affection from overseas too. We Sometimes we always concentrate on here, but then it's like an extra surprise. It's like the icing on the cake when this whole international audience gets a, a wind of it and then really falls in love. And then you get a whole other um, group of followers and appreciators uh, of the music, right? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. You, you just, and now that you know i have a couple songs that are going out to smooth jazz but really most of my songs are not that they're more like weather report ish or an international fusion of jazz r&b melodic all sorts of stuff and most of that because it's no radio format is going to be you know just digitally promoted and you can put out stuff all over the world in fact um i think blueberry jazz is going to be released to radio in indonesia soon and um but really, I'm getting airplay all over the world now in, in Zambia and in Hong Kong, um, in Holland and Germany, as well as all over the States. And there's uh, like 120 stations playing Blueberry Pie now. And it's 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 really remarkable, all these far flung places that you can reach now and, and anything on the Internet too. people from all over the world can see your show. A and uh, it's it really it's fascinating kind of meeting people from all over the world. And, uh, and then hopefully someday, you know, they'll walk up to me and say, Hey, I saw you on Jim master's show. That's I right. had to come see your show here in Tokyo. That's another place I'd love to love to play. And um, so, you know, there's yeah. so many, there's so many places, you know, so uh, yeah, that's are. part of the fun. You don't ever, when you've run out of places you want to play, then it's probably time to hang it up, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you go back to the basement, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to, the draw to the drawing board. Did you want to uh, fancy us a little bit more with that beautiful uh, baby that you have there? Yeah. Now, actually, my, my regular alto is oh, in the yeah. shop. Um, and um, he was supposed to send it here in time, but this is... I um I used to endorse L.A. Sax, so this is one of one of their horns, and I was um, playing it a little bit. Uh, let's see. Gosh, what do I have any? Uh, 
any suggestions from the audience? Anything they want to hear? Uh, yes. What would you like? Uh, something that, uh, or do you want to, is there any, how about an original, something of yours that may be original uh, that, okay. they would, that they wouldn't have heard? Uh, that's, that's yours that, um, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me think of something that, uh, I'm going to start with something you might know and man once told me you can't hit them highs until you hit them lows <laughs> <laughs> was that dad again <laughs> no no this, this was somebody at a show he's he didn't start out well he said is that all you got i knows you got more than that so he was trying to egg egg me on this was a few years ago you know i was kind of starting out and uh, i think by the end of the night he was happy but uh yeah yeah it can be a tough crowd out there sometimes jim i tell you how do you how do you deal with that uh probably very well right do you you uh <laughs> you know you, yeah you know if you start out a little conceited and egotistic that helps you right <laughs> That's i the remember thing. once yeah. uh you know this this was years ago i had my first you know black and white eight and a half by 11 you know that i would autograph for people when i did my first uh, album release and um and this girl, uh, you know, looked at the picture and said, wow, that's a really nice picture of you. How many, how many photos did you have to shoot before you got that one good one? <laughs> and <laughs> oh, you said, you, you hear, you hear, I, all you could do is laugh, but, but my you took favorite the saxophone one, and you went, <laughs> yeah, yes. So, so this was a few years ago and, and because the elections are coming, this is a good story. It was November 3rd, and I went to the local church where I vote. I'm standing in line, and there's a sweet old lady um, right in front of me. She turns around and, like, aren't you Danny Lerman? And I go, why? Why, yes, I am. And she says, um, <laughs> how's, how's the music going? And, um, and I said, well, you know, I've been doing a lot of shows in South Bend lately. And she said, well, if you're playing a lot in South Bend, the music can't be going that well. <laughs> Don't, isn't it really, doesn't it stun you sometimes, the stuff that can come out of people's mouth and they don't realize what they're saying? And uh, <laughs> She looks so sweet. I never would have thought that would come she, out of her she, mouth. Right. I, I, but she, yeah. hey, she gave me a funny story, so. I have that. See, now right. you can share it, right? <laughs> As you just I... now, uh, <laughs> some of them uh, have said, including was it Jennifer in Allentown says, "Play it again, Dan." Oh yeah. All right. So All I right. guess uh, anything uh, that's yours that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's. What uh... was the? You know, was something maybe that? Uh, what was the very first thing you composed? Oh. Gosh, that was called Flora's Tune. Yeah, the one with the uh, right hand and the left hand. These two little fingers doing the thing. Let's see. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
right yeah that's right and that's what everybody is saying huh mm. how does that make you feel right after what's that first sensation you experience right after it is probably that oh yeah <laughs> yeah i was kind of having fun listening to it i haven't played that in years um as a matter of fact uh when i played uh, the the first show i did with a symphony the south bend symphony i got to play that and wow. that was like what an honor that is and, yeah i got to wear a tux <laughs> uh, you know, I'm out there and the place was packed at the Morris uh, Civic Theater, uh, 2,500 people in this gorgeous old theater um, with the symphony, 70 plus pieces playing this tune. It was so gorgeous. It was just like the, the, the air was just getting pulled out of me through the horn. And I felt like also an out of body experience where I'm just hearing all these gorgeous strings and instruments. And the, and the sax mixed into it, it was like incredible. Damn, I want to do another symphony gig. See? I was just thinking about it. It's so much fun. I can't tell you how many people, when they come on the show, when they get a chance to perform live, whether they're singing, they're doing comedy, they're you know reading from the book they wrote, whatever it is, performing, it triggers that. They've been saying, you know what? I now want to create again. I now want to do more. And I think maybe because things have been so sort of, you know, discombobulated lately, coming on the show or chatting, you're playing, there's a worldwide audience watching, it's a good, cool vibe. It gives you the reignitement sometimes of the the passion and the reasons why you're doing what you love, right? Oh, for sure. I think you're inspiring me here, uh, Jim. So thank you for that. And I'm sure you've inspired a whole lot of other artists. So uh it's I've done one. my job. Yeah, I love doing that. And and uh, Mary says she loves your passion as well. And uh, Juanita in South Africa, that's another incredible place to perform too, South Africa. Juanita, I got to tell you a story. Um, I, I went to this radio convention uh, years ago and I met um, my old classmate, Joe McBride, who's a fabulous uh, piano player and singer um, and, a, um, and a promoter there um named dave dave parks is it um he was from S south africa so uh, i said hey i have this this new album out and then uh, the album i had out was danny's island so i gave it to him and uh and then three months later i get this email from him that says hey danny uh your song is number five in cape town on jazz fm we'd like to bring you 
um, in for the Cape Town Jazzathon uh, Festival, and it was the beginning of uh, January. So they brought me in, and I met some fantastic musicians like uh, Jimmy Mingwandi and uh, a whole bunch of others. Um, and they had me play with this trumpet player. Um, right there, it was near the water in um, Cape Town, um, and it was a full moon. It was dark, um, and there was some um, kind of Zulu background singers together, uh, South African percussionists, and kind of a jazz quartet, all South Africans, you know, and they have this great feel. And it was kind of an African jazzy kind of song. And they said, all right, Danny, start soloing. And I went to start blowing. And all of a sudden, these three girls started singing this African harmony. And I stopped because I didn't want to get in the way of what they were doing. And then I started blowing again. And then they came up and I stopped. And then the trumpet player said, no, keep going over the top of them. And I thought, all right, let me try it. So I started playing this jazz tune that had a uh, South African feel and the full moon, uh, gorgeous out there, um, huge crowd. And I started playing over these Zulu vocal harmonies with the jazz uh, um, band in the background and my sax soaring above it. Um, it was another world's colliding, international fusion, Zulu, Jewish guy playing horn, uh, African rhythm section. It was such a gorgeous mix. I've never heard anything like it. Um, and that inspired me to do some music, you know, with Zulu uh, vocals. And I started working with um, uh, mm. Jimmy McGuandi and Anton uh, 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 Lamini. And uh, she was in The Lion King. So, you know, I have recorded some music like that. There's a song of mine called Baby Goes to Market. And you can hear the African vocals and the sax over the top. And uh, um, it's a lot of fun. But it, it's, you know, it's kind of meeting the different cultures and mixing the music. And it's just like, you know, making a good recipe. You know, it's like, wow, I never tasted something like this before. It's that's fun. You got to be brave. It doesn't always work out, but it's always fun to try. And when you stop trying, man, that gets boring. So right. I right. like to do new things. Yeah. What uh, if we were to go into your um, CD player or whatever uh, you have to listen to your music, what would probably be in there now? What kind of music, what things do you like to listen to, Danny? Wow. You know, I like to hear uh, Gerald Albright or Luther Vandross or, um, mm -hmm. you know, even some uh, some straight ahead jazz. Um, Other I, types of genres as well? Um, yeah, I, well, um, I hear world music from, from all over. Um, I'll hear some, I like, I like some pop tunes, you know, and, um, and Earth, Wind and Fire, old stuff. Uh, and you know what? I'm, I think I'm turning into my dad because um, that in does my happen. car <laughs> on Sirius, guess what my favorite channel is? The Sinatra channel. <laughs> oh, I would have said escape. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm listening. I listen to the Sinatra channel. You know that a little bit of talk radio, a little bit of watercolors and, what a and colors. Sometimes, sometimes the comedy channel and, you know. Uh, I like to mix it up, and and of course the the sports, but um, yeah. even some even some rock and roll. Sometimes I I play with a rock band every once in a while, and that's more playing some tenor and growling and screaming, and 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 that's fun too. So I I appreciate all the different kind of vibes and and playing with different kind of artists. It, it makes it fun, and then you don't get in a rut. And in fact, I think radio should be no fat no format format. I know radio guys argue with me. No, nobody wants that. They want to hear the same old song over and over. Well, maybe I'm different, but I when I was when I played in Finland the first time at a jazz festival, they had Finnish MTV, and the first song was uh, Nancy Sinatra, "These Dancing Shoes," and right yes. after that was a Herbie Hancock song. Yeah. And then yeah. there was a country song. Then there was an R and B song, and then Michael Brecker. And I thought, you know what? I never would have listened to some of these tunes, but this mix kind of made it fun. You didn't know what was coming next. And I enjoyed every crazy thing. Uh, the U.S., 
they're afraid to do that. It's all the same. All the I would same. Say probably the only close thing would be maybe some college radio stations, right? Yeah. yeah. They, yeah. they can mix that up a little bit uh, based on whatever the the DJ of the hour wants from mm -hmm. his playlist a little bit. Yeah. I've heard some of that, which is kind of good. Um, I'll but, give you a story. Yeah. Um, I was playing last year in uh, in Bali, Indonesia, a beautiful place. Sure. So it was more of a rock club and there was some young, you know, college age kids and they had a great band. It was a little bit of pop rock and the audience was 20, 30 something and they were loving this group. And I said to the owner, man, I'm doing a completely different thing. I, uh, are you sure this is what they're going to want to hear? And he said, Hey, trust me, I brought you in here for a reason. Just be yourself <laughs> yeah. and they'll love it. And I Just said, do hey, you, well, right. Do well, you. Well, Hey, here, here goes. Uh, and, and I started doing my own original music and they loved it. And it was like, wow, these guys went from loving this rock to hearing my sort of pop jazz, R and B international kind of stuff, completely different, um, more instrumental and vocal. And, um, I love instrumental. Yeah. Yeah. They went, they went for it, you know, and you just, uh, it was completely different, but just because they like this thing doesn't mean they're not going to like something completely different. Mm, right. Exactly. Exactly. That's cool. And then, uh, you know, you have an opportunity to play off with other musicians as well. Do you, is that if your first choice, you love playing with other musicians versus solo. Some people like to be a solo artist and they just want to do their thing solo. Others really like the camaraderie and collaboration and playing off the sounds of the other instruments as well as the other artists themselves. Do you have a preference? Oh, yeah. I. It's way better for me to, instead of playing with tracks, you know, playing even with just a keyboard player or better yet, keyboard and bass or better yet, keyboard, bass and drums or better yet, keyboard, bass, drums and guitar. And with a horn section, with some Zulu vocals, with some percussion, because, you know, then you're having a conversation and, and then you're having more opinions and you're answering them. You're not just, it's like when you're talking and you're just giving a lecture and hearing your own opinion, uh, it's not as interesting as when you're having a conversation and maybe a debate with someone or an argument. Uh, it can be a loving conversation. It doesn't have to be an argument. And that's what you have on stage with the musicians. And each of you are pushing each other to greatness and to be better and better. A and then the audience kind of gets in there by, you know, showing their interest. Right. Um, and uh, it's really, it's really fantastic. Um, so yeah, you can't beat the live musicians. Um, and, you know, another, another secret that I learned from like, producers I've worked with like Tal Bergman he said you know what when you when you hire a guitar player or anybody he says I don't like to tell them here's what I'm looking for because you hired them because they're great musicians instead of sp spoiling them with your idea before you tell them what to do just let them do their thing first and they may come up with something that you never would have thought of that's way better than your idea that's right so let them do their thing first and a lot of times musicians, I tell them, you know, learn the tunes. You don't, I don't want you to play exactly what's recorded, you, but get the flavor of the song, but then do your own thing to it. So every time I play the same song with different musicians, it's kind of a different song and it's fun because guys are doing their different version of it. And that makes it fun for everybody. And in turn, I'm doing a different version of the same song all the time. So it's never the same thing twice. Exactly right. Exactly yeah. right. That's a beautiful way to look at it. What are some of the things that, um, you know, motivate you and empower you to, to create and continue to do what you do so well, Danny? Mm. Well, I think Charlie Parker had the great quote. Um, you got to live it to make it come out your horn. Uh, something like that. So, you know, you have your own, um, your life experiences and your life emotions, you know, whether, uh, you know, you, you were dating, you wanted to be with somebody or, or, um, or you want to win this championship or you want this job or you just want to go to some gorgeous place and relax in a meadow in the Alps. Um, 
uh, all these feelings are, are in you when you're writing it or you're you're nervous or you want something more and you don't know what it is. All these things come in the song. And then when you hear music, it makes you think of your own song too. Um, but I tell people that normally I have to turn on my inner radio. In other words, song just doesn't come to me unless I tell myself, I'm looking for a song. I'm going to write a song. And then my body somehow becomes open to it. And visual cues, oral cues I'll get, uh, will turn into a song. Like when I was in South Africa, there was some birds right outside the house. And they were singing in this percussive rhythm. And I thought, man, I think that's where some of these African rhythms came from. The animals, people heard these animals chanting these rhythms. And they copied that and made it their own. So I tried to make that into a song with that kind of rhythm, I heard the bird chirping, or or you could hear a train going by. That could be the impetus. A song starts with one small cue. It could be visual, it could be percussive, it could be a melodic, and then everything just builds from there. Just, hey, that's how God uh, built the world, right? From one small thing. So why not build the song the same way? Are you ever surprised sometimes what comes out of the horn? Like you're, you're just like, wow, I never thought I was going to be able to do that or reach that apex or, or pull that off. And you do. And it sort of inspires you, doesn't it? You know, it's funny. I, when you said that, I was thinking, heck, I'm surprised sometimes what comes out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Um, we can do a whole other show on that one. <laughs> uh, yes, for sure. Uh that's when it's really fun because that's the great thing about music. You keep getting better. I can't say that uh, for my ice hockey game, but for music, I'm way better now than I was 20 years ago. And every year I can do things that I couldn't do before. And you just stay with it. And, and all of a sudden you're able to do something and you think, wow, that was kind of cool. You know what? I don't think I've ever done that before. I don't think I could really pull that, that off. And that's what makes it fun so you don't get bored with your own playing. And, and that inspires you to learn new things. And, and not to mention playing with other musicians really inspires you to, um, uh, to, to learn new music and, and try new things and get better. Right, exactly, exactly. And that's the key is to get better. How about uh, have you toyed with other instruments along the way as well? Um, I play a little keyboard, um, and um, I'm singing now. In fact, I've got a you vocal are. single that's going to come out in January, a song I wrote. Oh, and, really? Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. You have to tune in for that one, man. It's, yeah. It's, 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 we'll uh, have to so, come back, and we'll do a yeah. whole thing just where you're singing. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, that would be that would be great. Um, um, I'm taking vocal lessons with um, Lindsay Kelly. She's a, a local singer here, and she's fantastic, and that's really helped me. I used to do more singing when I started out and then I kind of yeah. got away from it for some yeah. reason. Uh, and now I'm getting back to it and it's really fun to sing something during a show and surprise people and, uh, and, and catch them off guard. And, and um, I've got this cute little uh, Sopranino saxophone. It looks like a baby soprano, you know? Uh, and uh, I want to, I want to play that in a show too. You know, it's fun to bring that out and just pick up some people aren't expecting um and yeah some people are get, asking for a sample of the singing voice right now do you have anything at all or uh oh let's see i'll do something this is going to be part of my new song i miss you I miss all we've had and all you've shown me. With you, I was never lonely. But how you've grown on me. Little taste. Very nice. Very nice. And there's the sample we aim to please on yeah. the Jim Foster Show Live. Whenever possible. Can't always, depending on legalities and copyright and all those other fun things that get involved, right? We all know about those things. But we try, we try. That was great. So uh, you're resurrecting the the vocal prowess a little bit here, huh? And that's uh, that's cool. It's, it's so much fun because really, a lot of songs I write, I kind of write them 
uh, on vocals. And, and a lot of times I'll turn them into um, a lyrical song and I might do an instrumental version or a regular version. There's a song um, that I recorded, Take My Breath Away. Uh, and that's a vocal version. It's also um, Danny Boy singing a vocal on it. Not me, even though kind of the same name. Uh, but a, a lot of the tunes I write can be done both ways. And sometimes I, I do them. Um, there's a song I recorded from Danny's Island called For Now You're Just a Dream. And uh, I was uh, I was toying to, to figure that one out for you today, too, but I didn't get the, uh, all the instruments set up to go into the phone uh, today. But um, uh, that's that's also a real nice vocal tune, and it's fun writing lyrics as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because uh, the composer and lyricist combined as well as the talent trifecta, <laughs> which I think is really, really cool. Yeah. You, you know, I don't, I see some people working on their lyrics and writing poetry and it's like, I don't know how they do it like that. That's too much thinking for me. Yeah. Um, for me, I like playing the tune on the piano. You have to feel it. Yeah. And, and I feel it. And the rhythm, the rhythm of the note yeah. is important. the, word and the lyric you know so once yeah. you're hearing the rhythm you kind of know how many syllables you need and you kind of feel it does it is this a little bit sad is a little bit happy it's a minor major and and you, the the lyric comes out just hearing the melody it's for me it just kind of happens i have no idea how but that's <laughs> how it happens and I'm sitting, yeah and then you know it kind of turns into poetry but with the music inspiring it. That's that's how I like to write anyway. It's a beautiful way to do it. It's a beautiful way to do it. And uh, uh, remind us of some of the th cool things that are coming up on the horizon for you soon. Gosh, let's see. Um, I'm going to be doing um, a new single um, during... Yeah, I, I recorded this at, uh, with Adam Hawley, who's, I think he got a song number one right now on the charts um, in LA. And during this song, his wife was ser serving us hummus and oats. So I'm not sure which way I'm going with the title, you know. Uh, oats might turn into wild oats, you know. Uh, hummus, uh, I might have to shoot that video in Israel. Yeah, um, uh, so we'll, we'll yeah. see, we'll see yeah. which way that goes. That's gonna be released in January. And then um, I've got a, a song I recorded with Ronnie DeJesus. Uh, it was in his apartment in, um, in the Valley a, in LA. And it was probably nine o'clock and he said, hey, you gotta keep it down. Yeah. Um, because, you know, the neighbors and they don't, they don't go for us musicians, you know, making a lot mm -hmm. of noise. So I was doing a, I had to play like subtone on the saxophone, really kind of airy. That's part of it. That's very, part of it. very nice. Uh, and and that late night vibe because we had to keep it down. Yeah. And soft was perfect it sounded like you know the end of the You're night a, in a smoky club, dress club right yeah and it and it almost kind of sounds like an old standard uh you know it's that's going to be beautiful and i think we're going to maybe have some live strings might not even need any drums for that tune uh, this other song i wrote with this israeli composer and um tal bergman uh, he's a great drummer uh, he laid down this groove and it turned into kind of a weather report kind of sound wow. uh, and and, and uh, the writing process uh, was he looked at me and, and he played some chords and he says, OK, just play some melody. I was like, all right, just made something up and everything just magically worked. He says, OK, now my turn. And yeah. then he came up with the next melody on guitar. And then he looked at me, and says, OK, now you answer that your turn. And we just kind of wrote it like that. And it was like, with not trying to play to any kind of radio format, just whatever we were feeling at the time, uh, it was 
so much fun and and that tune's going to be awesome mm. Mm. um and these are all going to be coming out in January, early February. Um, and where will they be coming out where people can hear them? Um, it's going to be on uh, Blue Jazz Records. Um, uh, they're out of uh, Chicago. Yeah. And it's it's going to be, uh, you know, released digitally, um, internationally. That's, that's Greg, to, right? Blue Jazz? That's Greg. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's, there's going to be a wife video. Was just on, the violinists. That's Diane. right. That's right. Diane. There's yeah. going to be a video for each song as well. And I've never had videos for all my songs. People have put all my music on YouTube with a picture or something. But this is going to be new. Um, and for all you musicians out there, really, um, videos are a great way and really the best way. And uh, another in, uh, a saxophonist who's doing very well now that's one of my favorites is Kamasi Washington. And he's doing great um business as well and his songs are not really radio format people just hear him on the internet but he's headlining all places i played last year in the um elkhart jazz festival and he was headlining there mm. and uh, so hey i want to uh do some promoting uh in that um I just hired a uh, social media promoter ronnie lawson who's starting to work stuff and and that's really i think how you have to do it like you yeah. promote your show, um, you have to do it well. And, and what, what Ronnie and others say is anybody can post something. The, the key and the harder part is knowing how to drive traffic to your post with the hashtags and the verbiage you put with it and other things, you know, so. Um, it's a whole other art form to itself and science to it. Yeah, that's absolutely. right. Because I, I can tell you sometimes. How so don't forget. To, don't, so don't forget to share the YouTube link to this episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. This this is going on there. And after this is done, it's going to blow gonna be up the hell out of this. Believe this me. is going to be on real viral. <laughs> that's right. You know, and, you know, I'm sending it to all 400 Lermans. So. From there, it's going to oh skyrocket. Oh, God, it's going to be incredible. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be <laughs> it's going to be bigger than a bat mitzvah. That's going to be much bigger than that. Well, well, there you go. You know, my my music might not go platinum, but it does go Lerman at least. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. So it was great that you brought your son on, too, and we shared that song. And, and you do see a lot of interest uh he, he is really uh, getting an interest in this, huh? That's cool. Yeah, he is. At first he says, oh, you know, I want to play with my Pokemon and yeah. uh, I want to play with my friends. But then he sees what kind of fun I'm doing. Uh, you know, I was doing this this Gershwin show once. I mean, his daddy's um, a sax player. How cool yeah. is that? It, it, so it's funny. In fact, Ralph booked me. It was in this old mansion that the creators of Alka-Seltzer, you know, Alka-Seltzer, they oh, yeah. was, it, Flop, it was invented in um, <laughs> Elkhart, Indiana. So this old mansion with this beautiful grand and I was doing a Gershwin show and and uh, my, my wife was taking Priel to the show and she told me they just left the house one block away and she said, he said, hey, mommy, um, we got to go back. I forgot something. Really? What did you forget? Uh, I forgot my instrument. I'm going to play with daddy. And she said, but Priel, you don't play an instrument. And he said, oh, yeah, I forgot. Well, maybe <laughs> next time. <laughs> so he's already thinking ahead. <laughs> he was so excited. Yeah. You know, uh, and, uh, and you know, and cool. then after the show, he comes up, says, good job, daddy. Good job. See? <laughs> That's <laughs> funny, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like a little I'll manager running story. around. I told this story to... Um, Gemeinhart, which is a flute company in Elkhart, and they bought LA Jazz. So I was talking with them about, um, you know, doing some work with me because I endorsed LA Sax, and this is one of their horns right here. Mm -hmm. And um, so I wanted to get one of their new horns. And then I told them that story, a story about my son. They said, you know what? We just came out with this new child's horn, and they went and they gave me a brand new one to give wow. Priel. They, for me, I got nothing, bubkiss. But, but for him, but the kid got it. He, right. he he got a new horn. I didn't see that one coming, but hey. But hey, it's still <laughs> within the family, right? And it's going to inspire right. him. Um, do you have a preference over the alto sax versus the soprano? Do you 
like there's one call to you quicker like if you were you had to grab one fast uh what would be the one that's the one that you really that speaks to your heart and so you know they're heart? they're all my children i love them all and it usually depends what kind of song it is i will say that in general an alto works on more songs than a soprano because it's a little more higher pitched um and then i play some tenor as well um so I usually I'll listen to the song and and just see which one I think is going to be. And I may try uh, different horns on the song and see which one seems to work for mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I play mostly alto and soprano. I, I generally practice more on the alto than the soprano. But, you know, you practice on one, you can play the other. Um, soprano is a little harder to learn to play in tune maybe than an alto, but tenor is probably the easiest one i mean it's a big boisterous you know horn and I, more for a rock and roll thing or a big r and b uh, something but sometimes the same song will um will work on both um, yeah. i do a kind of unique version of long train running which you can check that out online i think i play tenor on that in the recording but i do alto live you know a few years ago um you used to be able to go to europe with checking two bags for free 70 pounds each yeah. so i check my tenor in a road case i'd carry on my alto and soprano and have another bag for my clothes then they change the rules you just get one bag 50 pounds so i can only take two horns so i just take the alto and soprano usually unless somebody wants to pay for me shipping a um a tenor over there um but actually at that Breda gig, I did a show in Istanbul mm. and I flew from Istanbul to Holland and my home, my, my tenor was destroyed. Mm. So I had to go find this local repair technician and, and she fixed it, cost me a fortune. Uh, yeah. When I tried to get my money from Turkish airlines, they said, oh, it's your fault for flying it with us. <laughs> so <laughs> really, so. And then I stopped taking my tenor for a while after that experience. Talk about but, service, lack thereof. Yeah. Huh? But I, I'll give you a story how my international career started. It started because I play hockey and my brother plays hockey. And after he got done playing pro hockey in Sweden, he came home, you know, to get his, you know, start his normal life. And he was managing me. He went to South by Southwest. And while he was there, he saw this drunken, guy who kind of looks very irish wearing a t-shirt said world hockey championships turku finland and he was fascinated how does this guy know about hockey in finland i played in sweden he went and talked to the guy turns out his name is dan doyle and he's a jazz agent so we f he gave him my cd um, Dan listened to that one wasn't so enamored with that one then when i had a new newer one out uh, that was Danny's Island. He really loved that. And he said, hey, I know who's going to like this. Yerky Kangas that books the Pori Jazz Festival in Finland. He sent it to him. He got me in there. I played in Finland. What a beautiful country. It's the largest outdoor jazz festival in the world. It's gigantic. They get over a million people there over two weeks. And I met a Turkish guitar player. We opened for Brecker and uh, Herbie Hancock at this huge 40,000 seat open place there in the forest uh, in Pori, Finland. And then he called me after the festival. Hey, do you want to go to, um, um, I book this jazz club in Istanbul. I'd like to bring you in. You want to come to Istanbul and play? Uh, that's, I said, hey, that sounds like a lot of fun. One question, where's Istanbul? <laughs> and he says, well, that's in Turkey. And I said, that sounds great. One question. Where's Turkey? Where? Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and then he explained this. And I've heard of Turkey, but I don't remember where it is. He says, well, most Americans don't know either. But, you know, so I went there and then I got a lot of fans there. There, I'm, um, I met another guy who was playing a show in the south of Turkey uh, in Marmaris. Um, I had moved to L.A. at that point. And I decided to go to six months to Marmers to play with him. And there I met uh, this couple, Jeanette and Peter Merckx. They were from Holland. 
but living on their boat there. Um, after that, she brought me and uh, this keyboard player I played with, uh, jo Joseph Sebastian Kofi, to Holland to play. And we played with all these Dutch Indonesians. And then that's how I got, you know, from South by Southwest because of a hockey t-shirt to Finland, then to Turkey, then to Holland. So you never know where life's going to lead you and how you're going to get there. Absolutely right. A lot of times practice, practice, practice. <laughs> yeah, you got to be ready for your opportunities too. For your opportunities, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, and you are, right? Are you always, you're, I'm sure you're always honing your skills and fine tuning, even though you've been doing it a long time, you're always improving, right? I always am improving and doing some things, but you know, one thing you realize is, you can't do it all by yourself, and it's better right. not to. Right. Um, so, for instance, for, for smooth jazz, I was smart enough to hook up with a guy that's really great at that format, Adam Hawley. And, and I like co-writing with guys like him as well. It's just kind of fun. It's not all on you, and I think many times it becomes better. And in that Blueberry Jazz song we did, um, Blake Aaron came in and played guitar and made the song even better with the interplay between sax and guitar. It's like a really nice conversation going on. So I like co-writing now with people yeah. uh, and it, it, you're each pushing each other and you end up with something that you probably couldn't get to by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever uh, toyed with the trumpet at all? I tried to blow the trumpet once, but man, I could hardly get a sound out. That takes a lot more air than horn, and That's it's a, your, your lips buzzing, and like, yeah, yeah. Whew, that was tough. I, I interviewed Chris Bodie on public television. He came into the studio a few years back, and he's pretty amazing, too. Smooth jazz, Chris yeah. Bodie. Yeah, really, really. Yeah. Uh, Dave Koz is another. Yeah. I like Dave Koz, too. Another another fantastic one. Sax. There's so many, I tell you, when you think about it. Uh but you're really terrific, and and you're really talented, and uh, and you got a you got a good personality too. That I think, and that plays off really well, especially with an audience, right? You like to have fun with them. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'll tell you something funny. Um, when I first graduated North Texas, um, I was playing with a pop band, and I realized I don't want to do this top forty stuff. It, it's not me. Um, then I went back home to South Bend for a while to figure out what my next move was going to be, and. Um, I moved to New York for a while. Then I got a, uh, a deal to do up my first album at this studio in South Bend that opened. So I came back, did that. And I did. I was able to get some gigs because in South Bend, I wasn't competing against famous artists like in New York. Just play a little dive down the street. Some Grammy Award winning sax players got that gig already. In South Bend, I didn't have yeah. that kind of competition. So I got to go in, hone my skills as a leader. Yeah. Um, so I'm on stage with Daryl Buchanan, who played with Junior Walker in the All Stars, That's and I'm right. blowing. And he, and after I, you know, I thought I did something really good, and I look at him, and he's just like looking at me, kind of like, I said, "What?" He said, "Aren't you going to move?" I said, "I, I wasn't I moving?" He said, "No, that's that's not moving." That's it. What, he, I said, "What? Well, what am I supposed to do? You're supposed to dance." I said, "Dance? They didn't teach me how to dance in music <laughs> school. They just taught me how to play." He said. If you want to be a leader, you got to learn how to move. You got to learn how to dance. And he said, okay, just watch me. Mm -hmm. You know, right. so right. I learned from him and the Junior Walker band, you know, and then I have one move. I learned this from Junior Walker. You're blowing. That's the move. <laughs> from Junior Walker. <laughs> did he say what it did he, say, did he say what it means or just do it? I he said here, I'll teach you this it's, move and just and, let it and I've been using it ever since. I try to only use it once per night. You can't overdo the move. No, you can't overdo no. Yeah, yeah. That is cool. Of, <laughs> that's very cool. A lot of comments coming in. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your incredible talent with us, Danny. Be safe. Thank you, Danny, for sharing your music stories and time with us, which is really, really cool. Uh, from Bernadette, Kathleen, and speaking of New York City, thank you for sharing your music with us. Love it. I know in New York, even the guy that's sitting on the cement 
at a subway stop is a good saxophone player too. Yeah. It is. It is amazing. It really, really is. Uh, this was great, Danny. I really appreciate all the time. We've gone almost two and a half hours. Could you imagine that? Oh my gosh. No wonder why I'm so hungry. It, I know you got to <laughs> eat. It doesn't, uh, thinking about the blueberry pie too. Everybody says when they come on the show, whether it's the viewers or the guests, that it never feels like that amount of time. It just flows and we have a good rhythm and a good vibe and a good time together. No, and it doesn't. No, it doesn't. And I'm standing up, by the way. Me too. I do it every night. And I tell you, huh? <laughs> time yeah. to stretch those legs out for sure. Well, I certainly hope that the show met your expectations. It'll spread the word. And I hope you enjoyed your time with me, Danny, as I certainly have with you. And of course, you're welcome back anytime. Yeah, uh, let me just say, everybody, um, hey, it's heartwarming to uh, hear all these great messages, and um, I'd appreciate your help out there, you know, going on the Spotify, look my name up, um, my website, dannylerman.com, check out my new single, Blueberry Pie, and, and the other music that's released, and, um, and share it with your friends. That's it. That's it. As well as this episode. Share this episode with everybody. Like that YouTube channel. Give us some love at Jim Masters TV as we grow it together. And everybody says bye-bye, Danny from Willie and Holland. Speaking of Holland, thank you for sharing. Enjoy listening to your music and stories. Mona says thank you. Really enjoyed tonight. Thank you, Mona, for tuning in. Juanita. Great move that you did earlier. Thanks, Danny, for a good conversation, music. Very enjoyable show, Jim. My pleasure, Juanita, in beautiful South Africa. Uh, Marsha, very enjoyable evening. Allison, great guy. You are really talented. Kathy Shore, thanks for sharing your time with us. Very interesting. Marilyn says, thank you, Danny, for your time with us as well. And uh, Sue says, thank you for sharing. Enjoyed listening to your music. And stories, as did I, my friend. You're welcome back anytime. And again, I hope you really enjoyed yourself on the show and met uh, the expectations you might have had as well. This was great. And I'm certainly going to uh, share this with everybody that couldn't see it live and make sure my friends, musicians, hockey players, and everybody else out there to check That's this it. out. Kathy says, good night, Danny. Renee in Iowa says, good night. And uh, Marilyn in Wichita says, thank you, Danny, for your time with us. Jennifer says, thanks, Dan. Love you, man. Slancha, the Irish uh, salute and yeah. cheers. Danny, thanks. You go eat and uh, you take care of yourself. Be well. You and your family. It was great meeting your incredible son. And uh, you're welcome back. And I look forward to that. And uh, let's stay in touch. Good stuff you shared with us tonight and a lot of passion. Thank you. I appreciate your joining me as my special guest, my friend. And one final thanks to Ralph Lampkin, who connected me with you. Thank you, Ralph. This was a lot of fun. And uh, looking forward to working with you uh, for continued success. Stay safe and stay well, Danny, from Bernadette. That's a good one, too. Thank all you right, all. Friend. You take care, all right? We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye okay. now. Danny Lerman, wasn't he great? And uh, Willie says, have a good meal. <laughs> I'm sure he is. He's going to rest those legs too. When you're standing up, as I do every night, it can really uh, <laughs> work those legs over. So I'll be putting my legs up real quick too. Our very special guest again, uh, Danny Lerman, just want to show you some a uh, couple of quick pictures we have here over the years with, uh, with our friend. Really nice one there. Look at these cool shots over the years. And you got a chance to uh, also play live. And then you saw a couple of quick clips, which is really, really awesome. And really, really nice. Look at this. And there he is as the hockey player. That's cool, too. He shared that with us as well, huh? Ice Cat. Love that. Good stuff. Good stuff. Gang, this was fantastic. We thank again our very special guest, uh, saxophonist, composer, and lyricist too here and there, <laughs> which is cool, Danny Lerman. Um, check him out again online as well. We always have uh, great conversations, lots of levity, levity and good times here on the show. And tomorrow night, I want to let you know that uh, Brandon and James are going to be with us live tomorrow, which is going to be really, really cool. Uh, 
Brandon is on the left. He was on America's Got Talent. He's a brilliant vocalist. James is on the right with the cello, cellist, and they are an incredible duo, and they're very popular, and they're here tomorrow night, live exclusively. Brandon's actually a great friend of mine. I met him at Carnegie Hall when I was emceeing a concert with another dear friend, Tim Janis. It was the holiday concert to benefit uh, actress Kate Winslet's um, wonderful for, uh, foundation for autism research, which is the Golden Hat Foundation. So then and Brandon and I stayed connected. And now Brandon and James will be here tomorrow night. And the brilliant, iconic singer, Josie Falbo, is going to be here on Wednesday night as well, which is really exciting. We're looking forward to welcoming her. And uh, coming up on November 15th is renowned multi-platinum winning artist. I'm talking about the musician, songwriter, and of course, the spectacular record producer, live and direct from Ireland, Phil Coulter, is going to be here as well. So we're really, really excited about that. Don't forget to smile as always and share a smile. Don't forget to uh, share the lovity and find your Zen place wherever that might be. Mine is always, of course, first with family and friends. And then of course the work, uh, working in television and radio and all these years and all the fun stuff, uh, wearing many different hats uh, on camera, behind the scenes, on the air, you name it in studios, on location, the whole bit. And uh, of course, cycling, tennis, music, and the ocean. The ocean as well is another great place. We thank our dear friends at LMG, like a music group for their time and wonderful attention and their fabulous support as well. And of course, we thank all of you and we invite you to relax, take care of one another, love one another, breathe from the diaphragm. Uh, of course, always share the lovity as much as you can even though that might sound a little Pollyanna, why not? Hey, the world can use a lot more inspiration and positivity and everybody pulling together and collaborating, having a good time in the process. So relax. Great week of guests coming up. It was wonderful to have all of you here on the Gym Master Show Live. We work really hard putting all these shows together and my professional work has gotten, it's always been busy, but super, super busy now. So we're balancing all of that during the day. Uh, with this show at night, and it's a it's a true pleasure. Of course, uh, George Burns is here, and George loved it, and he says hello to all of you as well. I know you guys love seeing George. Jeannie is here, and Jeannie says hello, blinking in that bottle. <laughs> I know you guys love all these characters, so we love showing them to you. And yeah, you got your friend Silver here. We got him on a TV shoot in Switzerland, and he's here and says hello to you as well, or in this case, good night. I don't know if I don't show Jimmy, you'll be disappointed. So there's Jimmy and Jimmy says, have a good night to you as well. And of course, we cannot go away without saying with love and good night from Gilligan, courtesy, Aloha Jim, Dream of Denver, of Bob Denver's wife, who uh, looked at our set and said, gee, you're missing something. And I said, what are we missing? She says, I'm going to send you a Gilligan, Bob Denver, who played Gilligan. So we really appreciate that. And uh, the big panda, Lin Lin, is over there. We're trying to find where we could keep Lin Lin on the set. But uh, we toast all of you, and we thank you very much for joining us. And uh, Bernadette says, have a restful night, everyone. Stay safe. And thank you, Jim. My pleasure, Bernadette. Juanita in South Africa, great show tonight. Thanks, Jim. Good night, everyone. Sweet dreams. You as well. Mona says, love your show. Thank you for the time. My pleasure, Mona. We're here just about every night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, live on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. Check it out. Subscribe to the channel. We would love that. Facebook as well. We're here at Gym Masters TV and Twitch and Periscope at Gym Masters TV. If you're just watching us for the first time, this is our, I think, 25th week, some 150 episodes. Uh, I do this work you know, in my uh, professional life in television radio, but we started this show at night. It's an entertainment lifestyle talk show series. Every show is something different, fun, unique, with lots of light, love, levity, and of course, lovity, and worldwide live interaction from viewers just like you, Mona, which we love here on the show. So thank you very much. And thanks for sticking with us late into the hour. Thanks for the show, Jim. See you tomorrow. Willie, you have a beautiful evening. Good to see you as well. We talked about Holland Delight a lot tonight, which was wonderful. Jennifer Barry, thank you, Jim, so much for all you do for us. 
My pleasure. As long as you guys are there, we'll keep working hard on these shows. And uh, tell everybody, spread the word, tell them about the show, tell them to tune in, tell them to watch. Uh, that helps the show when you do that, of course. And when you subscribe to the YouTube channel, it helps the show. Telling other people about this cool show, that helps the show as well, helps it grow, helps other people experience what you guys uh, seem to be enjoying. And thank you very much, Pasquads. Good to see you here. Love having you here. Uh, wonderful, Ms. Uh, Ferrante. <laughs> great show. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Christine uh, says, a great show with Danny tonight, sharing his terrific music and stories. Enjoyed his jazz music. He's a fantastic saxophonist uh, and composer as well. I agree. And uh, Tess Labella, thank you for everything you do for all of us celebrities. My pleasure. My pleasure. And thanks to those of you who've said you love the pumpkin. <laughs> Spiced it up. Uh, we're making it uh, topical to the time of year, right? We're always tweaking our set in different ways. So we added in that cool pumpkin there just for you guys to put a smile on your face. Uh, how is it with the Stroop waffles, huh? Gone. All of those Stroop waffles that you sent for my birthday from Holland, Willie, gone. We ate them all. We shared them, of course. I didn't eat them all myself but we share them and they're all gone. They were delicious. And thank you again. They didn't last very long. Very good with coffee and with tea and even some hot chocolate. Crystal says, good night, Jim and everyone. Thank you for an incredible show. Perfect. I got the message. Yes. I want to remind you we're doing a Halloween costume party uh, episode and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and we're doing it this Saturday night. And if you have photos of you maybe in a costume either now, or you have photos of you uh, when you were a kid in a Halloween costume, or if you have your own child or grandchild and you want to share their photo of them in a Halloween costume, send them to us at jimmasterstv at gmail.com. That is our uh, show's email address. That's the email address for the Gym Master Show live. It's going to be a lot of fun and several of you have done that already. And uh, there's a few surprises. We're going to have some surprise guests. Now, those of you who know, don't say anything because we want to surprise everybody. But there's going to be some cool people who are going to be uh, our guests dressed in costume. Uh, some are loveties as well. Some of the viewers and loveties are going to be joining me on the show as my guests. And it's going to be a lot of fun. They're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. So again, that comes up this Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, live on the Gym Masters Show Live. Join us exclusively on the YouTube channel, YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV, our Halloween costume party episode. It's going to be a lot of fun this Saturday night on Halloween. That's right. That's right. You don't have to worry about going anywhere. We're going to have some fun here. All right. So yes, the orange pumpkin. I know a lot of you have been sending me private messages that you love it. And um, good night, everyone. Enjoyed. Wishing you all a great night. Yes, that pumpkin is great. So again, if you have some photos, Halloween custom photos, feel free to send them to us at jimmasterstv at gmail.com, at least by this Friday. If you can send them by this Friday, the 30th of October, so we have time to download them and then upload them to our systems here that would be great. All right. Fantastic. And not everybody celebrates Halloween, but we'll have some fun anyway. Kathleen Walker, you have a good night. Love you too, Jennifer. And uh, Renee is making up goodie bags to put on a table on our deck for trick or treat time this year for the kids to take safely. That's really, really nice to do that. Absolutely. It's trick or treating has certainly changed over the years. Uh, Lin Lin needs a ceiling hammock. <laughs> Can you imagine Lin Lin swinging behind me the whole time? That would be a lot of fun. Th that would be cool. Just as long as she doesn't, or he, I have to figure out. We're going to have to check out uh, which Lin Lin is. Kathleen says, have a great night. You too as well, gang. So we're going to wrap up here. Two hours and 34 minutes. Wow, we sure do give a lot of good uh, entertainment value here on the show, huh? Yes. Yes. So, and so will some of the viewers too, who are going to be joining us. They're going to be in costume as well. And a couple of surprises. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have fun with it. And um, Bernadette says, we're going to do a shoot with a bowl of candy for the kitties. Oh, I like that. So you're going to have a shoot and put the candy in and it's going to go whoosh, and they'll have their bag at the end. 
and then they'll catch the candy. Good idea. Very creative. Socially distant. That's what you got to do. Mona says, sounds like fun. Great idea. Hope you have a great restful night. We love you here in Louisiana. We love you too. My cousin's husband is from Louisiana. His family is from Louisiana. They're from New Orleans. And uh, yeah, they, uh, she, my cousin lives in Massachusetts with her husband, Adrian, uh, but he's originally from, and he, the cooking, the French cooking, the gumbo and everything. She's a great cook because her mother, my aunt Dorith is from Austria, from Vienna. So she has the Austrian side and then her husband is from New Orleans. So you got the French side and sort of the, just that Southern Louisiana side and uh, the food that they create when we go up to visit their lake house in Massachusetts. Uh, the food is very, very good. It's delicious. We have a lot of cooks in our family. A lot of people like to cook, bake in the family over the years. A lot of my aunts always have, uncles, parents. You love to cook too. Fantastic. Fantastic. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, gang. We are going to wrap things up here. A wonderful night. Two hours and 36 minutes. Uh, wow. Some show. So again, you guys smile, take care of one another, love one another, uh, be well. And uh, we've got some great episodes coming up and terrific guests. Again, if you missed this episode and you would like to uh, watch it again, Everything is available for you on YouTube at the YouTube channel. There are tons of episodes of our show with all kinds of great guests, even days there's no guests where we've just done on location episodes. And I got to do more of that. I want to take the show out of the home studio here and go on location more. And uh, we've done food episodes. We've done a lot of cool stuff. And then have brought on these great guests. So missed an episode. You can watch every episode of the Gym Masters show live right there on YouTube at Gym Masters TV, right there, ready for your enjoyment and your viewing pleasure, as we say here in the business. All right. So we're going to get ready to go. I think so. And uh, might be doing some singing too. I know you guys have been asking for me to sing. You've heard me sing just a little bit when it's, uh, either our guests' birthdays or our viewer birthdays. We've been doing that a lot, uh, I think, ever since the show started. So um, we'll do be doing more of that, especially around Christmas time. We're going to break out a few surprises here for you as well. So our Halloween costume party is this Saturday night. Join us. It's going to be cool. Send us any Halloween costume pictures you may have to gymmasterstv at gmail.com, and uh, we'll get them in in time. Christine says, I like your pumpkin too. Good night, Jim, and lovely viewers, you as well. Yes. You mean other than the performance I do every night as your host, <laughs> which is also a performance <laughs> to a great deal, that's for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. See you tomorrow, Allison. We love hearing that. Perfect. Send the photos, yes, to TV at gmail.com. Uh, by Friday, so we can get them in for our Halloween costume party episode. Some of our viewers are going to be, some of our levities are coming on the show in costume as guests. We're really excited. We won't say who yet. We want to surprise everybody. I'll be in costume and we'll have some fun. You know, at first we weren't sure what we were going to do. Well, we're going to have a special extra guest on what we're going to do. But I said, let's have a Halloween costume party. We got the pumpkin going, so why not, right? Favorite day, I think of the years for me. I love Christmas, love Christmas. And uh, good night to you, Willie. Thanks for sticking up with us as well. All right, gang, always a pleasure having you here on the Gym Masters Show Live. A couple more last minute comments sneaking in here, which we appreciate. And then we're going to wrap up. I've got a an incredible, I got to get the name of the kinds of popsicles we have in the freezer on the other side of the house. They're from Trader Joe's. And they're so good. They're, it's a popsicle on a stick, and there's three different levels. And one is like uh, mango, and then another one. It's like it's like three. It's like a tricolor. The top one I think is maybe like a cherry, and then the middle I think is sort of like a mango or something. And the bottom one I think is strawberry, and it's got such a uh, smooth, silky texture. It's not like a regular popsicle that tends to be just icy and stiff. You know, it's like, it's just very silky in your mouth. Here we are talking about food again. 
love these popsicles. Um, I'll have to get the box. Uh, we're going to have one right now because after all this talking, you know, your mouth gets dry and, and the, uh, this is empty. We, we downed the pink lemonade already. So we're going to have that and they're delicious. And I will try to get the box for you. I know sometimes I try to show you things here on the show so we get educated and, um, good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks. Uh, Thank you. Glad you enjoyed the show, Ralph. We appreciate that as well. And uh, good stuff here, everybody. Good to see all these happy faces and uh, love having you all here. And now you want some, right? Yes, costume parties are the crack, the Irish crack. Absolutely. And now you want some. You want a popsicle, right? Good night, Jim. And uh, thanks for all your efforts putting this together every time. My pleasure. My pleasure. We have ice cream sandwiches. Oh, yum. Get ready, uh, Jen is Zen, your uh, favorite, well, not your favorite part of the show, but one of your favorite parts of the show is about to happen, and it's our uh, gym masters, singers, and orchestra doing their thing, uh, singing and playing uh, us out with our outro. So get ready to do your dance. You've been wiggling all night with Danny Lerman. Um, as he was playing, you wiggled in your kitchen, you wiggled in your hallway, you wiggled, I think, into the living room. And now you're going to wiggle again because our theme song is going to play us out. So uh, get ready to wiggle, as I know you like to do in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. <laughs> Good night, Jim Bob. My college roommate, who's a uh, sports uh, editor and sports reporter up in the Boston area, uh, first name Bob. Jim, sometimes they would, if we were coming down the hall, hey, Jim, Bob, that's what we would hear. Uh, don't have, yeah, you don't have Halloween. Yeah, I, I know in the United States we have it. Does Canada have it? Uh, I don't know if the whole, I don't think the whole world has it. Mona, thank you very much. Yeah, I, I love hats and uh, sometimes I sport a lot of different ones on the show. Sometimes I don't ha have one on the show. Um, but, uh, Linda Odell in Florida has always mentioned this hat too. She really loves it too. And, um, uh, so good stuff, good stuff. And, uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because Danny is trying to exit himself out. And all I see is one finger. It's just a big finger in the screen. <laughs> He's trying to figure it out. He had a devil of a time before we went on because you've got an iPhone and the iPhones don't always love the system and so but he made it he did it he got it in there <laughs> it's like going upside down it's funny i can see, you can't see it but i can he says he's trying to say how do i figure this thing out i got it now i can't turn the darn thing off how do we do this <laughs> it's really funny say so he's there it's like you're, you're trying to figure it out and try to get it are you in the car are you in the house I, in i'm the in the kitchen? car I, the I don't want to turn it off. Be yeah, but you're yeah, enjoying see? it too much, right? Oh, yeah. So where? That's we right. I'm, right. I'm listening. Oh, that's really cool. I'm show listening. This, show that again. Is that downtown South Bend, Indiana? Uh, yeah. Here we go. This is uh, by my studio on Ireland Road. Um, Prell in the back seat here. Uh, I'm at the red light. You know. Um, this is what you call bonus backstage back behind the scenes footage. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. There we go. That. That's a there's <laughs> live coming to you live from South Bend, Indiana, USA. Here we are. I told you we take you on location. They're now saying good night <laughs> to Prell as well. He was great. Thanks for being on the show tonight, Prell. Everybody loved it as well. You're getting this is live. This is live team coverage. Yeah, you were great tonight. We love the song, you, you and your dad. Awesome. Cool. See? I tell you. That's right. You guys stick together. You're going places, literally, right now. <laughs> yes, we are. Right. Kathleen says, uh, do you also do tra – do you guys do live traffic reports? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Live traffic yes, reports. Yes, we do. Lerman's. <laughs> we call it Lerman's Lanes. <laughs> Good stuff. Bonus, bonus, bonus. 
well, we're going to let you go since you're driving. But I just thought it was really cool because I just saw like a finger and you were trying to figure out how to get this wrapped up. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool. You guys, again, have a good time. And be safe. We'll, we'll see you again soon, okay? <laughs> see you again soon. Bye-bye. What a cool shot to end on. Look at that. <laughs> Take care. See you guys again. See, hey, anything happens. And, and when I have an opportunity, I like to roll with it. He, they're rolling with it right now. Uh, he's live. That's right. Uh, where Notre Dame is, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are not far from where the Notre Dame is, right? You're, you're not too far right now, they're saying. This is cool. You're not far from That's Notre right, Dame, like right? Five you're minutes. close to Notre Dame right now? Yeah. Yes, they, some right, of them are right. spotted where you are. Yeah. That's really, really cool. All right. We'll let you guys go and you're driving. So you take care. You be well. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Take care. Cool. There's some bonus for you there on the Jim Baxter Show Live, right? Some bonus. You just got a chance to see uh, downtown South Bend, Indiana. And uh, if you've never been there, uh, he's from there as well. Uh, Pete Buttigieg, originally from there. You've heard that in the news of late as well. And uh, cool to have another goodbye. Absolutely. On his way home uh, there in South Bend, Indiana. I love that. So cool, wasn't it? Soraya, hi and bye. That's good to see you as well. Pretty cool. Thanks. You got it. Yes, he does traffic reporting live from South Bend, Indiana. There, That was cool, wasn't it? So cool. Thanks, Dan. Good night, Priel. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. They're driving, so we're going to let them do their thing so they're safe. You're very welcome. You like the extra bonus, right? <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to wrap up. This is, and Juanita's still with us. Wow, you guys are real troopers. Juanita's still with us, and it's late into the hour for Juanita. And Juanita said they don't change the clocks in, in uh, South Africa. They don't move them you know, forward and back. November 1st in the United States, our clocks go back the hour. I love it here with you, Jim. I know our goodbyes are always uh, extended. We love you being with us as well, Jennifer. LOL, it's uh, like that a bit in the movies after the credits. You get the bonus, right? And Mona's still enjoying this. <laughs> well, I know, I know. It's uh, there's I can see them. They're still driving. They're still, they don't want to. They love it too. Juanita, yes, it's just like that. I know. Jennifer's home. Awesome. We try to have a lot of fun as well as we get into inspiring and deep conversations. And you never know what turn, literally, especially tonight. You never know what turn this show takes, but hey, I'm somebody who likes to run with it and uh, can be react. You know, I like to react to things as it's happening and glad you're enjoying it. A little bonus there. Exactly. All right, gang, we are officially going to wrap up so they can get home. So you guys can get rests and I can have that uh, Trader Joe's popsicle. Little bonus there for you. These long Irish goodbyes. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, gang, this is your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time. Till next time, one more time, you want to see this episode again, YouTube at Jim Masters TV. If you can, we'd love it if you subscribe to the channel and share the channel with the world. We're um, increasing the um, subscribers left and right, and we appreciate that. And you got several of you who have uh, subscribed, and we love it. Um, good stuff, good stuff. All right. That's it. Jen is Zen in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Get ready to dance because our theme song is coming on with the Gym Masters Singers and Orchestra. We're going to wrap up. That popsicle's waiting for me, and we're going to get this in under three hours. Wow. See what happens when you're off for a couple of days on the weekend? The next show is like a uh, marathon. <laughs> well, as they're driving home through South Bend, Indiana, we're going to be heading over to the freezer to get the popsicle. You guys have a pleasant evening, pleasant day, pleasant morning, pleasant afternoon, whatever time it is that you're watching this in the archives or watching it live. For everybody here, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time, back here tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific with Brandon and James. It's going to be really, really cool. See you later, everybody. Take care and be well. Thanks for watching this episode of the Jim Masters Show Live. Love you all. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.